Screams. Just in time. I think we're rounding up a chair for you, Larry. That's all right. There's one out in the hall. <laughs> Are you going under your I, said I, would, I said I would take the one in the hall. Larry, we'll move that table so you can follow uh, it. Wait, we'll be up on it here. If you're all right with me here. There's room by the cookies. Huh? Yeah. There's room by yeah. the cookies. We can make room. It's full house. It's the first time we've had everybody in there. Yeah. No, we don't wait. Don't wait at all. Yeah. Move the cookies closer to you, Molly. Thank you. Okay, it's uh, 704. We'll call the July 22nd meeting the Marion County Planning and Zoning Board to order. Uh, first off, roll call. Dwight Fleming? Here. Brad Gorsuch? Here. Kathy Linlow? Here. Jim Schmidt? Here. Mel Fleming? Here. William Kropa? Here. Chase Gann? Here. Here. Larry Cushenberry? Here. Lynn Thiessen? Here. Derek Belton is here. Uh, Sharon Olmstead, our secretary? Here. Brandon Meyerhoff, our recording secretary? Here. Russ A.V., our planning consultant? Here. Full right. house. Um, item number two, record proceedings of the May 27th, 2021 meeting. <clears throat> Does anybody have any corrections or comments? to approve the minutes as written. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried, minutes approved. Uh, item number three, continued discussion pertaining to solar energy conversion and alternative energy regulations. I might just give a few uh, background notes here before we get into the three pages of memo. So much like wind energy conversion systems, uh, these solar energy systems uh, can, can be much more simplified. Or as you can see in my memo, I wanted to give uh, the commission here the ability to review what I would think of as kind of an extensive list of, of requirements for these types of facilities. We have, we have talked a little bit uh, over time about the differences between the two re renewable energy sources. Uh, with wind energy, I think we uh, are all aware of uh, the dynamic impact it has on the landscape. Uh, the uh, amount of interest it generates from area property owners, and by what I mean by area property owners is an extensive area of property owners that are impacted by the scale of, of facilities uh, like, like wind turbine, uh, wind farms. With solar, uh, in my experience and in some of my research, these are fundamentally different uh, from a physical scale standpoint. They sit on and occupy a much smaller footprint, although that footprint, let's say it's 40 acres, uh, is nearly unusable for most all other type of traditional farming activity, unlike a wind energy conversion system. Uh, that's one fundamental difference. The other is the visual scale of them. These set probably no higher than 10 or 12 feet off the ground. Uh, some of them are, are eight feet or less. <clears throat> wind er uh, solar energy systems, similar to wind energy conversion systems, um, take on two fundamental uh, flavors. One uh, is an accessory uh, to an individual user a farmstead may have a wind turbine of 50 feet to generate its power needs and sell a little bit of that 
generated energy back to the grid, uh, similar to people who have solar panels uh, on their roofs or on their uh, accessory sheds. Uh, so there is what we would call an accessory type of solar collector, which is pretty much all our current regulations deal with. Our solar collector is typically for personal or private use. What we are considering uh, are more of the developing uh, utility scale, large scale, primary scale, whatever we want to call them, uh, but a single purpose generation farm that is uh, solely uh, for the generation of renewable energy to be sold off to the Southwest Power Pool in our neck of the woods, uh, similar to a WEX system. And so what I have primarily addressed in this memo, again, uh, the ones that the two uh, solar farms that I have uh, dealt with were somewhat unique. So we've talked a little bit about private facilities for the individual uh, property owner and these large scale uh, wind farms that are basically just a utility generating uh, facility. But there's also a third middle ground that I haven't covered here, and we can talk a little bit about it. But the ones that I have been involved with were for actually for municipalities. Say the city of Marion buys 48, well, this is a, the city of Osage City up uh, south of Topeka, had an old 40 acre tract of land that was their old landfill. And they decided that they wanted, they got some grant, and they were going to develop a 40 acre solar farm to supply energy back to their community. Osage uh, City is one of the communities that still generates their own electricity as a municipal utility. So that was one um, uh, kind of a unique situation. I'm not sure how prevalent those are. I think primarily what we're going to be dealing with uh, are just the two, I would suggest just dealing with the two categories, those that are accessory to a personal property owner and those which are going to generate larger scale uh, generation capacity, whether that's for a city, they can come in and get a CUP, just like uh, Solar USA Corp or whoever comes in to, to do a solar farm just as a utility company. So in looking at a lot of the literature on the regulation of solar, uh, solar this collection facilities, I found it somewhat unique in that a lot of the discussion is don't regulate. We want it. We want to make sure that it is uh, can be as widespread throughout the country as possible. Uh, again, similar to wind energy, there is a top-down governmental push to get as many of these facilities up and running as soon as possible, right, wrong, or indifferent. But uh, oftentimes you look above you uh, in the governmental structure to find guidance on how to regulate it. And, you know, there's no sense in us doing it. We'll get to this on the next agenda item. There's no sense in us locally doing something if really the power sets with the state or the federal government. In our situation, the state and federal government, uh, as, as well as a lot of planning practitioners, uh, are coming from the idea that we shouldn't be regulating them because we want them to flourish. And I think, as we all know, the answer for Marion County probably lies somewhere in between. So what we've talked about to date, uh, I think I've beat the drum of keeping these simple uh, setbacks, uh, making sure that uh, if there's homes adjacent to them, that they're screened and things like that. So I didn't think that we needed to have too deep of water on the regulation as a starting point. In looking at it, uh, especially once I started putting this memo together, I started looking around uh, at what other counties are doing. By and large, nobody's really doing anything. So again, uh, similar to other uh, zoning items, this is kind of slow to take hold in regulations. So there's not a lot of great examples. I borrowed uh, primarily from Sedgwick County's zoning code, unified zoning code, as to how they handle renewable energy facilities. As we know, they prohibited WEX systems, uh, but they do have primarily uh, what's in front of you, uh, a, a, ser a series of, of development standards for this. They treat them as conditional use permits, the same, the same process as we do. This memo represents what I would think as a maximum width and depth of, of regulation for these things. 
I'm not endorsing all of these, uh, but it's a starting point to, to, to whittle down if we want to when we go forward with the discussion. The question I'd have is, do you think that lack of regulations or planning or whatever restrictions is all about welcoming, or is it just that it, 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 it would seem that there would be a fair amount of it like on the cutting edge. Yeah. It, it's like it's it's new enough that no one has taken the lead to step out front and, and sure. uh, put out the template to say, hey, this is what we need to have. Um, well, I am, a, I am a pioneer in, in my profession. No, uh, <laughs> I, it's a combination of both, but, but very much uh, when I speak to groups that want to uh, have limited regulations as a, as a means to foster the development of these uh, solar farms. I'm talking about governmental agencies uh, and firms that specialize in getting green energy up and running. Uh, when I talk about local governments not having a lot of regulation, uh, again, I'm gonna point to the fact that uh, the Midwest and Kansas uh, uh, in particular is very deregulated. There's 80, 90% of the counties uh, are unzoned. So that kills off you know, probably 80 or 90 counties right off the get-go. Of those counties, uh, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, of the zoned counties, Dave uh, Yearout has written probably half of those standards <laughs> and they're just exactly like ours. Uh, same thing with the CAFO discussion later on. So we are, uh, writing Sedgwick County's coattails. Harvey County has done uh, a similar set. Harvey County has got uh, proposed regulations being discussed. Johnson County is looking at adopting some standards uh, here next month. Uh, Johnson County offers most of the rest of Kansas, for example, because they're an urban county. Uh, so there are a lot of examples of how to do how to regulate uh, and provide restrictions on the development of solar farms in urbanized counties, especially back east, where everybody's on top of one another. There's virtually nil, and the suggestion is, if you're a rural county in the Midwest, don't regulate them. Not for any other reason, but again, just to, just to be uh, welcoming, if you will. So I think our situation is kind of a mix of, of all of that. We are a rural county. Uh, we are generally in Kansas not uh, accustomed to regulating everything under the sun, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but in, in our situation as we've learned from other facilities, specifically WEX facilities, that, um, that we, need to, we need to have something on the books, uh, if nothing else, than to provide staff guidance of how to permit these things uh, in order to have uh, a rational discussion uh, when we start seeing CUPs for such facilities and things of that nature. Uh, I think uh, we talked a little bit about, somebody had mentioned Lindsburg, uh, again, kind of like Osage City, a municipal system done for the municipality, um, didn't seem to have a lot of regulation to it. And I'm not saying that it needs to, but, but again, our experience with de developing WEX uh, farms I thought it would probably be best for me to try to throw out as many things as possible to discuss in, in these conditions uh, before we set the public hearing and move on. And there's gonna be some changes to this memo between now and when we have a public hearing to make a recommendation for actual text amendments to, to, to the zoning regulations. So uh, again, I think uh, after putting this memo out last week and reading up reading some more things about it over the course of this week uh, you know I think that uh, we probably need to do I probably need to put together for you going forward some discussions on maybe differentiating between a primary and a second and an accessory uh, system to make sure that again we probably will not regulate much of anything for an accessory if you want to have you know an array on the south side of your Butler building get a building permit have at it uh, so, with that, uh, I might just quickly go through uh, through the memo. As you can see in, in the present regulations, we simply talk about solar collectors as a permitted accessory use in our zoning districts. We do not talk about anything at scale. 
So again, uh, the starting point would be a definition of what we're talking about. And I guess there's probably no avoidance of this. We're gonna have to maybe come up with a different acronym, but for tonight's purposes, we're in the solar energy conversion system, we're gonna be, we're gonna be talking about sex tonight. Um, there again, starting off with the definition, are we talking about a one megawatt? Some regulations start there. Some regulations don't consider this a utility scale wind or solar farm until you hit 100 megawatts of generation capacity. Uh, so from that standpoint, we may need to think a little bit about um, how we define it. What, what makes it a utility scale solar farm versus just a, a solar farm for an individual user? Um, My thought on the one megawatt is what about the 750 and below thousand? Exactly. Are so you just saying they have free reign, or or you exclude them? Uh, what no? What covers some so that threshold? Because sure. the megawatt class laser, or laser, I dealt with lasers in my past. Sorry, sure. solar. That's a lot of energy. So something I literally read about four hours ago was uh, not having, you're either an accessory to your farm, everything else is a CUP. So uh, there, there are people that, that choose to define it not on the generation capacity. And I think that is tricky because there certainly is no consensus. I mean, there is no consensus. One megabyte seemed to be the most frequently cited, but there's also something called an area um, uh, definition, and that is if your solar farm takes up more than one acre, you're getting a CUP. That was my question, I know it probably varies, but how big of area are we talking for a megawatt? Well, we uh, talked about that last time. Yeah, and I don't remember what we talked about. I, what was one of Canopolis, what did we say that was? That, and that what they said one of Lindsberg was is one megawatt? Right, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I can't, I can't remember. I think, I think it was. If I remember right, we yeah, said that was a said. one megawatt, and that one there's. So it was 10 or 40 acres, one of the two. Yeah, I think it's more closer to 10, because I drive by it every day. I yeah, it's I, not. I feel like 10 not. acres for a megawatt is in the ballpark. Yeah. Um, so maybe we add into something there, along with the megawatt class, covering X acres or something. Some sort of minimum acreage, you know, any, anything over. No. I, I kind of like your idea of the usage, going the usage way. You can't really. Whether it's for supplement or private or for sale. Because so, then you don't get the, all these yeah. balls to go. It, there, there needs to be a tight definition regardless. Yeah. I mean, that right. that's imperative. Now, the last, last 20 acres was what we came up with in the last, <clears throat> according to the minutes. So, you know, that means somebody's going to just lease disjointed 10 acre tracks. I think the goal would be to have it, if you're going to have a solar farm, have it on one tract of land yeah. and get away from this wind farm stuff where you're just, and, and that's a whole fundamentally different reason why they do it. But we won't, we don't want somebody skirting a, like getting five acre tracks skipping down a trans close to a transmission line. So I think there's a better way. I don't think this necessarily, I think this gets us to the first step, but um, you know, it gets tricky because everybody has the potential. You can't define it on, well, for personal use or for sale because everybody's renewable energy is theoretically for sale back to the energy company. So- Yeah, that was a, I was just throwing that out there. I, that, I was I'm more like, if you're using it for your own private use, to supply your own equipment, your own house, your own, that's what I meant. If it is accessory to Or your other. Yeah. Yeah. Other, I just said for yeah. sale as See, other. that changes, uh, that changes the, by the season. Solar, you know. the solar I know one guy that has some, and sometimes he gets a credit, and the summer times he gets, he doesn't get to reach the credit level, you know. Right. So it averages out nice. Right. It changes month to month. But, but he's, but he's, basically yeah, got it for his own power. Right. The only reason I'm bringing that up is because then you avoid those things like you're saying. The 10, the yeah. segmented 10 acre plots and 
and uh, you know I'm going to come in at 0.78 megawatts of the you know what I'm you know you avoid all of that. I just don't I, I don't think there's going to be a great um, concern. I mean e we're going to be dealing with somebody like Next Era or whoever does it for solar rolling in here and they're going to have a footprint and that's what that's our facility and here's all of our stuff. Um, even a municipality is going to have that similar thing. Uh, just for example, Lindsburg. Um, uh, the Osage City one was on 40 acres because the city had a 40 acre tract, uh, which was going to be fairly much all the way utilized. They had a draw running through the south. One of Lindsburg was located due to substation location. Exactly. Just like wind energy. The more transmission lines right. you have to build and get easements on, the less money you're making off of that right. project. So uh, again, um, we'll come up, I'll come up with a, <clears throat> other alternative definitions for our consideration uh, when we get closer to, to putting this uh, to public hearing. But um, that's kind of what we're up against a little bit is the newness of it all uh, and the complete lack of regulation. Uh, many places, and it's almost entirely cities, uh, regulate uh, the heck out of um, personal systems. Uh, and there again, you don't want to, you got urban density, you have somebody that's sec their master bedroom on the second floor is going to look right over into their neighbors. Does that create glare? Does it do this? Does it do that? Sometimes, the, most of the time, the answer is no, it has no impact, but we, we don't plan for those, we plan for the, the ones that are going to have an impact and try to mitigate those. So again, whether or not uh, we want to get into decommissioning agreements, uh, whether or not we want to get into road maintenance agreements, again, I think from a construction standpoint, this probably is, you know. From what I've seen out there, you didn't have any trucks that were hauling anything no. more than what you'd haul to build a house. No, no. Uh, I was going to say we, we de dealt with building a, a new grain uh, elevator in Quan Mill, Kansas, in South Sedgwick County. And, you know, that's about as much concrete as you're going to pour for three or four houses. I mean, yeah, you're going to have some heavy equipment there for a while. But we're talking about piling, you know, footing. We're not talking about deep footings. Uh, you're going to go out right. there with the post pole. That's why I said it, look, it, it looked like somebody getting ready to build a shed or a house type. Yeah. So I think the thing that that I keep coming back to is it seemed like, okay, I wasn't in on the very first pass, and others others were on the wind energy, on the WEX. Mm -hmm. and, we, and, it, and it appeared that it started out vague, a lot of loose ends. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's that's where we started, and it and it took like five years. I mean, you know, once it, once we had something to work with, then it was like, okay, oh wow, we got five years of work. I don't know how long it took, but it just seemed like forever. We got to go through this, got to go through this, and got to go through this, and redo it. And, and we've had two amendments since I've been around. Yeah, and and so I guess the the challenge that's before us is, I would like to see re not to regulate the heck out of them. But let's make sure we have a sound, let's get the key things taken care of as best we can, mm -hmm. rather than just saying, well, willy-nilly, let's just put something down because it's not going to, we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, so, because that's harder, I think it's really, it creates a lot more tension when you come back later. But at the same time, there has to be some sort of sense of urgency because from whenever I come on, first you know it was better to there was a lot of hindsight wishing there was some something in place prior to the wind energy coming in and that's but, kind of what i'm yeah, saying but no, Same thing. that's what i'm trying to get that is you know yeah. like we need to have something in place so we don't have just a blank sheet there and say oh right. you want to put out so, you want you want to have some sex out there then you know it's like so i read through this lovely boring thing <laughs> but i thought he did an excellent job yeah. Now, is there some things I think could be just tweaked a little? Sure. But I think it's worth at least <clears throat> giving it. That's sure. that's better than a blank sheet of paper. Guys. Yeah, I agree. And that's the bottom no. line. And I think I that's agree. what we were all kind of asking for. That that I mean, give us a starting point. 
So now you have a chance to go Sorry, through it. Yes. What? Not yet. <laughs> um, so uh, again, uh, we're trying to cover in some ways the same type of bases. Uh, you know, we don't really have to worry about height, but we have height standards. So, so there again, a lot of this uh, we're hoping, similar to a WEC system, is. This may look complicated on paper. Uh, it's certainly nobody in this room knows what half of this stuff means, uh, but that's not necessarily our goal here. Our goal is to make sure that the applicants coming in with the CUP are the experts at this stuff and they will provide us the answers. So what I'm getting is that these solar arrays uh, and, and my first experience with utility scale generation uh, was with a local high school in Wichita, Maine's high school, uh, wanted to do a, a little a 10 acre tract. Uh, I'm not sure what their generation capacity was, but they had a little piece of ground that they wanted to do a solar, like a miniature solar farm, say 100 panels or 50 panels, primarily for the school district, primarily for the propaganda of green energy and as an educational tool for, for, this, for, the, for their students. And, you know, Wichita was just coming off the prohibition of wind energy systems, primarily based on, well, for a number of reasons, but primarily based on, uh, look, we've got 100 airports in Sedgwick County. The aviation industry is, is uh, obviously the largest footprint in that county. And so the first question is, Blair, no, Blair's not a thing. It's actually glare is counterproductive to the absorption of solar energy that converts into electricity. So again, it's there's not a glare issue. There's not a noise issue. There is a transformer uh, that that uh, that can emit a hum, but it is not anything that goes beyond the the background noise. It's certainly not the the noise of a, of a turbine. So. Noise really isn't an issue. Height really isn't an issue. It's mainly keeping it set back. And the setback requirements, quite frankly, are less for the public, more for the adjoining property owners that may live close. But it's also to protect the solar up to the sky. Now, we don't really have these issues. So a lot of these solar easements <coughs> that you might see when you, when you research this uh, are the dedications of easements to protect the open sky. We, I don't think we're going to have open sky uh, limitations here anytime soon. So some of that may not be relevant for, for a Midwest uh, county. But um, I assume that these larger facilities are going to have to go through the same hoopla that any other large-scale development has to go through. You have to, if you're in floodplain, you're talking to FEMA and DWR. If you're dealing with uh, certain environmental impacts, you're going to make sure that your 40 acres or 100 acre solar farm isn't displacing the spotted skunk or polluting the streams or anything like that. So there's going to be an environmental assessment as part of their permitting permitting requirements. We might as well make that. We have the opportunity to make that a part of our regulations as well. Uh, solar glare, this uh, SGHAT uh, solar glare hazard analysis uh, was interesting. I never heard of that before, but it is something akin to a wind energy conversions flicker analysis. If you recall, they run simulations over the course of a year, depending on how the sun hits them at various parts of the day, what shadows they cast and where they cast them. And if there's flicker on an adjoining property, they have to move that turbine. So there's modeling with wind energy as to, to mitigate offsite impacts. Uh, there probably should be some sort of analysis to make sure that solar glare, which is probably the first thing people think of, uh, solar glare for pilots, solar glare for bird kills, or another type of uh, fauna uh, impact. And, and so uh, some type of analysis whether it has to be this or not. I had a question about the solar glare. Uh, back earlier on, and you noted there's a pho photovoltaic, and I think that's the one we sort of see around here. But there's right. also, you see this concentrated solar thermal devices. 
Uh, could I, you explain what that is? Sure. I think they probably should be prohibited. Um, Why not? Think, think, think of 1970s, 1980s original solar out in uh, the Southern California, Arizona, Nevada desert. And that's the this case. is the one where you have the big old collector and all these things. It looks like a like an orchestra pit, and they're all in a half circle, and they're pointing, they're concentrating that solar energy to a collector. Um, and I think there's a salt, uh, like a solid salt that it gets so hot the salt turns liquid and then they use that. It's basically a tower yes. that it glows and yeah. it's, it has to be fairly high because these collectors have to beam it up to that. I, the reason why I brought it up That's is I just talked to a guy about a month ago and he was traveling through California and he goes, they were driving along and, and they saw this like a, eon, like a beacon yeah. out there during the day. They're just piercing light, like a welding. Yeah. And as they came, like, like 100 miles, they came there and it was, it was what you were talking it's about. It's the looking glass on an And amp. they were all beamed at this, this tower that was probably 100 feet or more and it was melting this salt solution. I, you know, you can't tell what it is, but it actually was so bright that it was a concentrate. But I, I look at, if you have a 35 foot limit on the height, they, they can't get up that high. So, so I, think, I think the disclaimer of 35 feet high was gonna keep that one from going there. But that, that sounds like a bad. You wouldn't way. want that that low because I, I mean. Exactly. No, because, okay. because it's a. At this stage, I, get I would think that we want to limit it to only systems that use the PV. Exactly. Technology. And that's what, in that first paragraph, that uh, CST, this uh, concentrated solar thermal device, that's like a nuclear. Yeah, that so, nuclear. so a few things. A, uh, there's no, today, as opposed to 30, 40 years ago, there's absolutely no need for it. Okay. Um, uh, they're less efficient in many ways. They're more expensive to build in many ways. They're just not the emerging technology. But that's great that you brought that up because that's why I stuck that stuff in there. I'd rather take away than try to sit here and figure out what we need to put in. Okay. So I think that's a good point. I think that we should, and many places do this, because there's really only a few places, and that's the desert areas of the southwest, uh, that these systems would ever go in. Uh, and I think this is where you do get a bird flying through there and get zapped or, or what have you. That's everything that's bad about what we would think of negative impacts on solar. Uh, but these PV systems are actually the opposite of that. Um, how much heat they generate really should probably be a moot point, but they don't generate heat. They certainly don't generate glare because of the absorptive. Uh, they usually have a matte finish uh, to maximize uh, absorption of solar. Uh, honestly, to be, and we'll go through these, but to be perfectly honest, a lot of it has to do with uh, the maintenance of the ground underneath it. It's hard to get mowers. Uh, there are a lot of, and you can imagine the places, or yeah, some of this stuff comes from Oregon, some of this stuff comes from back east, um, and some of it is a little bit of an eye roll, but uh, you know, I think California has a policy of these wind farms have to about, plant a certain range of ground covers that support pollinators. So I don't know if we need to be bee friendly here or not, but um, but it also, whatever type of ground cover, I think there needs to be ground cover. So that was really one of the, the only dis points of discussion uh, was making sure that this was, the Osage City facility was screened from the neighbor to the south the city had met with the person to the south and all of that worked out great. It's obviously a perfect reuse of contaminated ground that can really support very little else since it was an old landfill. Uh, but, but erosion control measures, permanent erosion control measures and drainage are, are going to be a real uh, focus on, on regulations. We don't want these things to grow up with weeds. They're not going to let them grow up with weeds, but you know, if there's if there's a best practice on what type of ground cover to plant underneath this, and maybe it's just prairie grass. Hopefully, it's just prairie grass. Uh, yeah, that means so. You know, the chair of that area would be shaded, so it's going to take some kind of plant. I would be interested in learning a little bit more about that. that a little bit. But if you have, have a, a little bit grass or sort of thing, that would go there. But you know, you're probably going to space these in rows that are good enough to have, have some sort of. Have you seen Lindbergh? Lindbergh? New. Because according to just witnessing out there, I got to drive by that thing like 50 times a day. 
this uh, fixed act, fixed tilt, that's not what that is. Because when you first drive by it, that's what you think it is. But after you drive by it six times a day, <coughs> it's in a different position every time you drive by it. And so part of what I I brought up last time was, you know, I noticed when the first time I saw it, the panels were all like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how in the heck you mow under that? Because it's like, you'd have to have a midget with a special mower, you know? Well, when Sounds they like tilt, I got a job opportunity when they, my way. Well, <laughs> you may be too short, but anyway. When they're tilted, you can see how it, it's fairly easy to mow. And, and I talked to the guy, and, and for maintenance on those, there's a override where you can like lock them to this way, mow it, then trip it, flip them the other way, mow it, trip it, and then it goes back to this regular. So just it, if that helps answer yeah. some of that questions that y'all. Is it all grass under that one? It's all grass, but right now it's probably that high grass, so they haven't been tried to mow it yet. It's, it's also goats. all brown. So. Goats. Yeah, but uh, you know, a lot of that is something that we can we can control, similar to how cities handle nuisance complaints. But you, you could right. I don't. You don't want to stick something in there and then have to back it up. I mean, are we going to fine them? You know, I mean, what's what's the enforcement action on that? Because quite frankly, nobody has a better vested interest in keeping the weeds off of those solar panels than the right. operator. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think what they're doing. Farmers control their weeds. I think what you're going to find out is like you can tell the bluegrass or something that does well in the shade that doesn't get high. Because right now, they're, I think what they're fighting right now is some of the native is coming back up in the part they disturb. And some of that, great, you know, you don't want that. And, and Osage, if memory, like big serves, not a fit. if memory serves, you know, these things basically set on a one pole, one, one, uh, pillar foundation footing on one pole and then the array had a had its harness and then they rocked underneath a certain strip the width of those panels they rocked it you know there's still gonna be weeds and stuff growing up in there but then they would mow the paths in between them we don't I mean but this isn't a residential area I mean it'd be like if you went to a farm and say hey yeah. your prairie's getting too tall you need exactly. to your your native grass you know yeah, your, I agree I think that's you need just... to mow the, I don't think that's an issue, but yeah, it's good well, to as, yeah, I think, look at that. But I think this is out in the open where you wouldn't think you'd be trying to control their. I don't think your mowing's going to be your issue. Exactly. I, think your, I think your issue is going to be with what you said about erosion control. You're going to have to find something that grows underneath there. Well, we kind of addressed this in E a little bit, and maybe that's just good enough. So E, these people have to deal with their weed problem just like you guys have to deal with your weed problem. And I don't think that's going to be a critical issue, uh, to be perfectly honest. I think they're going to have yeah, somebody like in Marion County, just like the WEC system, that's going to be. Yeah, because the reason I say I think I don't think it's the height and the aesthetics of it that's a problem, because if them things tip and then get a downpour of rain, and you got no vegetation under there, you're going to have <coughs> erosion. I like you that way. They don't come in there with a bunch of thistles and plant them. <laughs> Should we back up and kind of work through what you have here? Sure. And and that way, I mean, I think our goal is at some point we want to bring a set to a public hearing, whether it's this set. Um, I mean, I think that's what we're shooting for here is establish a public hearing at some point here yeah. and, and talk about these. Um, Certainly. You know, so, so nothing set in stone with these, obviously, but uh, it's something that throws rocks at. It's a yeah. It's better than a blank sheet of paper because, you know, I I'm definitely no expert, so I. You know, well, we're all learning on the fly, that's for sure. But you know, there again, I think with our Wex experiences, uh, we understand how big the game can get, uh, and some of the issues that people have. Uh, some of them are similar. Uh, most of it, I think, is dissimilar. So I think there again. Um, so B, uh, whether it's relevant or not. Um, certain things like communication towers, WEX systems, uh, anything that's over 100, uh, 200 feet, uh, you know, you're getting involved with the FAA again. Um, I think B is pretty much 
clear cut. Very straightforward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is just what they have to supply us when they make an application. The FAA is yeah. going to dictate their rules and they got to comply. Here yeah. then. On major construction projects, we have a, a stack of, here's uh, Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks letter saying this project has no impact. Here's the FAs, no impact. Here's KDHE, no impact. And you have to get all those letters to get your building permit for certain type of construction projects. So this, these aren't things that a, what I would consider a legitimate developer are gonna balk at. This, this is stuff, again, like the WEC systems, these people have this information started. I mean, th they know, there's no place in America that they are going to avoid having some of that uh, permitting requirements. Um, but it also has the advantage, I think, in my, opinion of taking the BS players out of the equation. The, we want to create, we want to have a, a, enough of an ante we want to, quality, quality to keep company legitimate company. people in the game. So um, we already talked a little bit about the solar ha uh, glare hazard analysis. Uh, there again, to see. Yeah, there again, uh, if there's something for whatever reason that's going to be uh, predicting that there's going to be a glare problem, then and they have to either re reorient the system or relocate the system. Yeah. The environmental assessment, I think that's, again, that is standard pro forma for most major uh, utility projects. E is kind of the catch-all there again. Um, we do this with WAC systems and a number of other things. So there again, if, we're, if we've got this, uh, something to generally point out, and of course Marion County is gonna be more in the running than, than my neck of the woods, but um, it's wonderful if you can design <coughs> these solar farms on the south face of the hill. You want, you want topography, so that's great. <coughs> but with topography, uh, you're, you're gonna get some so maybe some erosion, uh, soil erosion uh, on those facilities. So again, have them come in with some sort of uh, BMP game plan for, for erosion control and stormwater drainage and things of, of that nature. And there again, you know, depending on the nature and the size of the project, maybe that's not anything that we will have to worry about, but they need to address it. They need to show us how that's not uh, necessarily a problem. F is getting into to the WEX category. This is something that Sharon and I debated last week, uh, but thought it, Sharon thought it was uh, something that I should put in, and that's, uh, again, some sort of financial agreement. Do you so, guys get, Sharon, do you guys get compensated for anything you do today? Does anyone ever write WEX? you a check? It, the other than a, the a, county, uh, yes. A the, well, permit, building permit? I mean, yes, we receive the pilot payment from right. the wind farm that's operating. Do you have a fee structure for everything? Big fee structure? There is an agreement between the commission. I'm saying, no, do you have, if I walked up and said, show me your fee structure, everything, do you got a big long list of things you charge fees for? Oh, yes, yes. So this would just go on that list? No, this is a little different. So we, we can't legally require them to have a pilot agreement, if that makes sense. Um, That's this it. isn't a pilot agreement. No. It's not, but yeah. you can yeah. be compensated for um, publication fees, yeah. um, That's, extra nice. materials, sure. things like that, you know. Is so solar tax exempt like wind? Not in my research. Okay. As a matter, of, but but my research covers the country, so God only knows what Pennsylvania or Wisconsin does with their state with their with their tax systems. Um, everything that I everything that I've read is not uh, again comprehensive by any stretch of the imagination. Talks about a lot of the impacts for the development of solar farms getting made up for by the increase in property tax. So everything that I've read indicates that these things are taxed as a, as a utility development, which is kind of the middle of the road. 
it's not industrial tax mill uh, levies. It's not commercial rates, but it's utility rates. So it's it it would go. And, and, and I guess my point would be is that if if we confirm that that's something that these facilities are going to generate their own revenue the traditional way, then we kill F off. We we put that in there. That's kind of the language we borrowed from our rep, WEX regulations. Um, because if they're going to be paying pilot. taxes, they wouldn't right, be right. doing that. Yeah. My my point was, you know, if you got a set fee, okay, if someone walks up, they start with a, they hand you a thousand dollar check just to start before the process starts, just for processing cost or or it, you know. And that's that's kind of what you're after here, right? You know, publication fees, right. copies, that sort of thing. Yes, we. We have a, received reimbursement from. In other words, you recover costs. We did recover costs. You recover yes. costs, not. Yes. On but this so. is taking it to this is being proactive and putting it out front. Because right. you're going to cost us 200 hours of labor, and it's going to here. Whoa, we're stopping right here. Write a ten thousand dollar check, or we're not going further. And that's a policy. That's really, precedence that we haven't set in this community, have we? That's something that, that the actual document and agreement is going to happen, like the road maintenance agreement outside of zoning. All those zoning is going to point in that direction. We can't tie zoning to any type of fee exchange uh, under threat of contract zoning. All I'm trying right. to say is this this is precedent setting that we're at if we're going to go and set it. That's what has been set with WEX systems. We're we borrowing that same language. That is the WEX language. And I think that is legitimately a copy paste. We do have things set in that's, place. That's beyond my knowledge base, yeah. obviously. I mean, we have some things set in place in our WEX regulations. Not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying. And in our specific ancillary agreements with the wind projects in the county that state they'll compensate the county for like communication interference, whatever, or specific things that we may have issues with. They have agreed to compensate the county if those issues arise so that we can mitigate. But the only way to access this property that they have under contract has a, a WPA bridge that's about 10 foot wide. And everybody, our engineer, their engineer determines that that has to be replaced. Then that's something that falls on them. To, to, to where where I struggle with bridge. F is, you put this out there and someone goes, well, "Man, how much is it going to take to grease them? Is that ten thousand, twenty thousand? It says provide an agreement. Oh, yeah, I agree. I think this, if, that if I read this right, is this? This would be uh, negotiated by the county commissioner. By right. the governing yeah. body. Right. Mm -hmm. As it's adopted into the resolution. We won't know anything about it. Right. We won't have any input in what should go in right. it. But that's pointing them at the starting point, because zoning is usually the starting point of a project like this. Wouldn't this be, I mean, this is one of those items that, okay, we were in the WEX. So this is. We learned, we learned that, okay, yeah. this is really time consuming, it's expensive. We had no way to get there. And, and so this was added in after the fact. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it seemed to address that whole problem of how do you how do you recoup those costs? Because they're huge. And, you know, there again, and I don't want to make our regulations any more complex than they have to be, uh, mainly because I have to answer questions about them. Uh, but you can stratify it, you know. I mean, it's, so so I'm I'm looking, I'm going through some of these, and F is one of them, and I'm thinking, you know, that makes sense because you see some of these in California, the hundred acres, you go well, or China. Uh, China has one that they built into the shape of a panda bear that's fantastic, and I think that's that's on a section of land. Uh, you know that, yeah. I don't think we. We need every regulation on something of that size. But I'm thinking of Lindsberg or I'm thinking of Osage City. And do we want to, you know, I mean, if Hillsborough comes up with a grand plan, okay. yeah, we want to see him come before us with, with a CUP or annex the land. And you deal with the zoning in Hillsborough or whatever. But 
I'm fine with that now. Once I understand it, it's it's at a higher level than than yeah, you. It's at the uh, county <coughs> level that says it's bring money to play to cover the cost. Yeah, yeah. I always agree because I don't. <laughs> it's got to be me in that deposition chair along with Sharon. Yeah, and that this is something that you know uh, Pat Hughes put a lot of time in for the county uh, over the last few years to get some of these things and. If Pat feels comfortable defending it in court, I feel comfortable. I, I was thinking way smaller than that. I see it. Now. I like Again, that. I like money. I've never said I never like money. <laughs> and, and, and if somebody wants to roll out, you know, because I don't know, you know, you get some of these family corporate farms, you know, if, if you have a fairly huge farming operation and you're out in Wichita County or something, man probably want to be your own little medium small fish to take care of not only your farming operations but that side income right uh, but they have the ability maybe financially to do 40 acres themselves like a small municipal system so as long as we're getting them in I don't think we need to have mr. and mrs. Smith and, and their family farm come in if they're gonna put you know eight panels out by their garden or on their roof sure um, but everything else probably needs to come to us. So, so we'll figure out what that tr trigger is. Um, but some of these agreements are going to be nothing because the project really isn't impactful. But it also takes care if somebody rolls in here with a, a half section or a quarter section. At least we have something. A couple truckloads of $100 bills. <laughs> <laughs> By putting the word like agreement that. in there, basically what we're just saying is that it's a negotiable thing per, per project, per individual with the county commission, correct? Russ Avey, what does the agreement mean when you when you wrote item F? Yeah. He doesn't want to like, talk about yes. what he wrote here. Yes. Uh, you know, it's like Sharon Olmstead directed me to write that. <laughs> I like it. Okay. I'm good with that. It makes sense. To, to me, it just, it just, I, to me, it just says that there was a negotiation. There was a negotiation between the person applying and the county commission. Yes. And that negotiation is like you said, it could go anywhere from ten thousand to zero. Yeah. That's um, what the agreement means. So the last thing. Back to say we're going to be paying taxes and it's all a meet point. If we figure out that, yeah. the next time we have a discussion about like this, the next but time they attack, there's nothing yeah. wrong with money. Maybe we just, and the county commission certainly will, will certainly weigh in on this, but. We were reimbursed $26,000, $36,000 for um, cost above and beyond our normal daily activities. Okay. From but they're talking bigger numbers than that. Well, yeah, yes. That's I'm just saying those were some reimbursement costs that our department <coughs> received for attorney fee reimbursements and copies and it's kind of I mean without calling it a pilot payment it's basically a pilot I mean payment in lieu of taxes sort yeah. of deal is yeah. basically what that is right. but if you don't get that if you don't get that if, it, if that doesn't happen mm -hmm. and you got to fight over it mm -hmm. that's when things get ugly well these pilot agreements I mean but the county said, the commissioners who are trying to bring money in yeah. to balance our budgets are saying we're willing to listen. We're, we're happy listeners. They're trying to get reimbursed for as well. I mean, because it's not cheap to do no. all the publications and all the copies. And no, not at all. all. It's economics and, 101. And they generally the want to work with the community and be a positive yeah. force in the That's community. all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, when they roll in here and throw up their PowerPoint presentation and say $32 million to our school districts, that's like, all right, yeah, yeah. All right. what do you need? What, what's, <laughs> how are we going to get that $32 million, a truck, you know, a truck full of... And Larry gets wheels. a dog dish with his name on it and everyone's yeah. happy, right? <laughs> Aren't you happy? Extreme. Two dog dishes. <laughs> okay, you're out of it. It's a, whole, it's a whole different deal when you think. When it you discuss real. it on paper and when you live in it, it's, yeah. it's I'm just saying. It's different deal. You see, you see and hear things in meetings, and you see things in the newspaper or social media or, or whatever. But if you look at the books, those large CUPs have brought in way more money than what we've spent on them. Way more. So I work in the aircraft industry, and I can guarantee you 
and I'll just say I work for Boeing and I can guarantee you Boeing put a lot of lot of they were very nice they put a lot a lot a lot a lot of million dollars into the Wichita community sure. for goodwill yes and soften everyone a little so when they wanted to bring in or build a factory or do something they were very friendly I mean I was stuck on Saturdays going out and do, raking yeah. frickin' leaves and doing projects and everything on the goodwill of the, the dang uh, company. The downside of that, though, was... I was a shitty breaker. The, the downside of that was, though, when you get a corporation <laughs> that comes in and does that, then all of a sudden the local prices are based on the employees of that company. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. And the people that ain't working for that company, it's like, if you got y'all got to raise it, boy, Prices went up in Wichita, if we didn't get a raise at wherever we was working. So that's but that's the I'm hazard. just saying it's, it's standard, standard business practice. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's standard business practice to uh, yeah. 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 To treat the communities yeah. good. You catch more flies with honey. I mean, that's and that's really corporate. All right. Right, we'll keep, keep moving here. So okay. much like F G is uh, that road maintenance agreement. Similar, uh, not the exact same as the WEX. And again, I don't think there's going to be near the impact at initiation, and I don't think there's going to be any impact for maintenance going forward. But it's in there. It's in there. The, we, it's a box we, check, we, we can all debate the merits of whether or not we have to have it in there. Just but, leave it in there. Okay. Yeah, we don't have good roads. I mean, so it's a. It. It's a check the box. Yeah, if you don't put it in there, you're going to get whacked for not having it. Yeah. And again, um, H is a little bit uh, of, of that standard conditional use redundancy. If they need a state permit, you got to have it for our zoning. So it just kind of cross ties everything together. Um, so anything that they need, if, if they're supplying something to the EPA or KDHE or the DWR, then we want a copy of it as well. I don't really have a strong feeling on that one, one way or the other, because there are other conditions that kind of marry that same uh, requirement into it. Uh, I do provide a 35-foot uh, height limit. What does the provided comma, however, mean when you put those two words together? It with, with the semicolon, the comma, or I'm just trying to. In height provided, comma. However, said I reason. I'm just trying to understand if it's. I think that's just fancy, fancy regular words. regulation structure. Uh, I, I the the punctuation. I'm gonna leave to Kathy. I feel like I feel like that. <laughs> that's I feel like that is uh, that you do use the uh, semicolon. Uh, semicolon, comma, comma, comma. Is that okay with you? Kathy drafted that sentence. Did you do that? <laughs> no. You're not going to agree to that? What, what can you take the provided out of the sentence and, and then just say, however, said height the sentence will not apply to the Common comma is pretty standard, isn't it? How about uh, <laughs> the, the sex shall not exceed 35 feet in height, period. Height restrictions shall not apply to the substation. Just make it into two sentences. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Well, we like made it. progress there. Man, we did something. See, I got you out of it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, all set structures shall be set back to the project boundary lines, uh, 40 feet. So 35 foot height limit is a very standard height limit for single family zoning. Um, uh, I, that most everything is from a two story house is less, a little probably about on average, a two story farmhouse is probably setting at 28 feet uh, based on how you measure that at the side of the roof. So 40 feet there again, I think Osage County is the one that I, I think they were set back 50 feet, but there again, they had more, they had a good space to need ratio. They weren't going to, you know, they, they certainly weren't jam packing their collectors. They had a pretty spread out. So they could, 40 they, they, feet doesn't seem like a ton. Uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 feet is a good width to, a circumnavigate a site because you can get a truck you can get a heavy truck around it so for us we have sand pits down in our neck of the woods you always have to leave 50 foot so you can drive and mow around it 
the head from the bank. How did we come up with 40? You found 40 and you copied it? 40 feet is what I've been, 40 feet is what was up at uh, Osage City. It, it's based on what you're saying, though. It's based on it's turning a, radiuses of yeah. semi trucks and, and mowing the apparatus. It would be what I would consider the minimum. And also, uh, it's not. If I, we, I think plus 10%, which is common. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, we have setbacks off the road for entirely different reasons than we do for the WEX. You know, we're, we're, the, the, these things aren't going to tip over more than five feet. Uh, right. So it is for it is for two purposes. I would argue one is so that there is adequate drive. You can drive a, around the perimeter with, in certain circumstances, I think you probably have. Uh, you know, you don't quite Safe have. Fire fight you you don't easy. quite have the grid system of ag layout like I have back back south, where you have hedgerows, and so you keep anywhere a minimum of thirty feet off of the hedgerow to protect the hedgerow root system. So you keep your sewer lines and all this other stuff 30 feet off. So it's just the minute what I would consider the minimum buffer. If we feel like we need that to be 50 feet, then we can have it 50 feet. Um, but there again, we're not creating the setbacks in any of the same for any of the same rationale as we were for a WEC system. But or, your next sentence is additional setbacks, blah blah blah. So right. So so like in the Osage County, they had a neighbor to the south, and that dude's house was right up against their, well, right up against, it was probably 50 feet from the north property line. Um, so they had a 100 foot setback, mainly because they had a draw that kind of came through there, and then a large hedgerow in this guy's house. So they just offered, they could have put that <coughs> facility on half the acreage, but they just choose to use the whole thing. So if we see a situation where this thing works, but man, over here in the southeast corner, there's a house, and this guy's living, that they're putting this up there. You can say, okay, in that corner, I'm fine. we need you to modify your site plan to pull all those 100 feet, not 40 feet. This it, it's basically it's just saying it's adjustable for extenuating yeah. circumstances. Which, again, is redundancy, because in the CUP language in Chapter 19, we talk about how you can apply right. and modify standards. So. Three passes with a 15 foot mower, and if you went to 50, then you got to make another pass. That's an excellent yeah, point. That is a good point. But, but you're overlapping. Yeah. I'm not good with enough. 15 but. foot mower, or you overlap it in 40 feet, yeah. and you get it in three passes. Okay, right. yeah, you, you're in good shape. I'm fine. That's why I came up with 40 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer, and you came out. Yeah. I never had to do much building, actually. We had one of those things that just stuck out. Just a single, single floor. <laughs> actually, I so, wish you would have been in yeah, on designing yeah. the median for the interstate. <laughs> we wasted a lot of backtracking trips because of the width of that. You mow it and then... Okay. Yeah, we'll keep, keep I mowing. think there's enough we'll resorts we'll in there. Trip. It says additional setbacks for whatever drainage or whatever yeah. may be required. Uh, K... Um, K is actually probably should be two. Uh, that second sentence should probably be its own condition. Yeah, I didn't understand the yeah. no outdoor storage of any materials or equipment is permitted. That's just like a, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, there you yeah. Outdoor equipment is a solar array. Well, that would be, this, what, I think in this context, it would be the solar array that's their backup in case the one that's being used needs to to be replaced. It's basically to keep the site clean, I think, is what you're shooting for yeah, there. Yeah, the only and thing that's going to be there are going to be the solar panels. Or it's going to be in a building that you can't see it. It's got to be, it's yeah. got to be functioning, yeah. it's got to be a functioning aspect to what's going on present. Right. Yeah, you don't want it to turn into a construction yard and a solar farm. You can't park your mower no there? <laughs> Not outside. No jump. So basically, no if they have a mower, they got to have a shed and they put the mower in. Yeah. So basically, it's split K to two, two to one another. Yeah. 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 I mean, in all the examples that I've been a part of, there's nothing out there but probably weeds and solar panels, right? There's no transmission lines even. They just no, come they out of their well, they're underground they, yeah. for about yeah. 15 feet to the substation. Yeah. Uh, and there again, I've had bad examples. So then you should say within perimeter fencing, no outdoor storage of any materials or equipment is permitted within perimeter fencing. Or I think we're going to separate them. Perimeter fence should be at least eight foot tall, 
and then there'll be another line yeah. item that will be no outdoor storage. I, just, I failed to just hit return. Materials or equipment. Okay. On site. On site, yeah. On yeah. site. Okay. I'm good. Here again, um, whether or not this is standard practice, it has been in the ones that I've dealt with, on-site uh, power, any type of transmission line communication or power uh, are to be installed underground, uh, and then they come above ground and transform into the grid. And we'll let them tell us, and, and that will make them dictate to us how they uh, intend to get the power off the so off the solar about overhead power line to this facility, and then you think within the facility is underground. But you're not going to make them go underground 20 miles down the road. No, no, no. Until they get to the grid, and that 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 could be a line that's in the road right away. However, they can connect to the grid. To no, me, have to explain it. To me, they'll have to explain it. But to me, just like with WEX, I clearly don't think that transmission lines outside of a project footprint needs to be discussed at all. Whatsoever. We've been dealing with overhead power lines for 100 years. So that's my two cents on that. But no, with, with, no with, argue with <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. No, 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 no. Nope. Here's, one, here's one for you. They've never hit an overhead power line without a dig site. <laughs> Just saying. But I still have. And never accidentally dug into an overhead power line. Okay. I got it. But I still let's, have a question. Let's keep the maximum it. size of these uh, uh, photovoltaic farms. I'm just like, a, how much would 40 acres? And I think I asked that last time. It'd be interesting the megawatts, if, if the max. Yeah. Because then that would generate what kind of a power line that would come out of. Okay. Just for my own. I think my that's a megawatt line. That's not a very big line. No, no, it isn't. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. These solar, they're, they're a little more subdued compared to what at these the, the winter. And their generation capacity and just their. I mean, you can imagine. You, you go through a, 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 a wind road, hell, you can't see it. You wouldn't know that there's anything over there. Whereas you can see a turbine. I can see the ones in. Um, Coffee County coming out just outside of Emporia. So what's the draw? Why do they even build these? I mean, if they're only producing four megawatts, if they're worth that, the revenue is so small off of that, what's their payback? I think just the cost of installation and, so and the ubiquitous them. nature of, of you can put the, you can cite them you so can much these and no one even knows it's there. Well, that, there that has, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, what I want to say, it's a, an accessory that that's not the word I'm looking for. It's supplement, supplement that's the word I'm looking for. Everybody's it's a supplemental yeah, system yeah. to one that exists because Lindsburg, yeah, it's like option. okay, so when everybody turns their air conditioners on in the hardest part of the day, when they're <coughs> using the most electricity, that's when those things are generating that's their most electricity. Right so it levels out your it's taking so out you, the peaks, is what so they're yeah, to it's do just, just dealing. It's a, it's a you know, but the, Billy, you got a good. That's a good question because I know that even when we were dealing, even before Expedition Wind got started, um, we were we were starting to hear that even like Next Era, and they got high, you know, they got derailed in Reno County, they got high centered in McPherson County, and it, but but everything I was hearing about the McPherson case was that they may not fight that in court because they're slowly turning towards more solar development. Why? That's a good, that's a good question. I'll find out more about that. Was it cheaper? Was it less acrimony? You know, was it easier to get installed? Are there better subsidies? I, 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 don't, uh, know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, I know the panels are becoming more efficient, and then also batteries are making a big improvement. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we need to have any I think we do. We should have in here uh, that that battery systems and all that stuff are appropriate accessory structures as part of these solar farms. So that we'll probably see panel the panel arrays. We'll see access roads, and we'll see uh, any type of uh, storage sheds or battery locations. 
Uh, but th they're again similar to how a, a lot of the regulatory agencies are not coming out with a, with a long list of, of restrictions. They're asking that those types of future battery storage isn't here yet, but it's going to be. And so go ahead and allow battery storage as part of these systems and not make them come back for these extra add-on technologies. Part, part I think what's driving this panels versus the turbines is copper. There is a tremendous amount of copper used in, in those generators and then turbines for the winding and stuff. And they're predicting that the way we're using copper right now for all these things, that you're going to be looking at forty to four hundred thousand dollar a ton for copper, just because we can't mine it fast enough. So that keeping in mind, if you're looking down as a business, going, yeah, maybe I don't want to put all my money in there. But we'll go over here to solar panels. I think that's part of what's driving that. We'll have we'll have an expanded discussion on that. Keep rolling. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I don't know how big of a deal Ann is, but it might as well be in there. You can't. Like I said, China has one that has a panda bear. I don't know if you care if they spell out. I think that's Mary just so you, you don't have a billboard put up that shades their panels. That's true. That same thing with the with the solar easements. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a Agreement though, are you talking about a property owner would be would put up a big sign that would shave the panels? I think well, you're talking just like it's like if you're on the driving down the highway and they got you know Ma and Pa's restaurant 15 miles ahead and they put that sign up to where when the sun's yeah, over here for two three hours a day, it shades their the, solar panel. This is on the sex. Right. This is for them, but they can't just put any. They can't put a big sign saying this is mom, mom and pop. Yeah, solar panels. I mean, this See, goes that make, that's what don't make, make no sense to me because it's it's like they wouldn't want them, right? I wouldn't think that they'd want them. I mean, that's put it on the north side, then it wouldn't matter. We can't very easily legally control what a sign says. They can't control what a sign says. No. We can so, control where it goes, though, right? Yeah. We can control where it goes. And, and if we say it doesn't go on that itself. in there, then we got it taken care of. So if you say there's no signage allowed, that presents an emergency period. I mean, what, what's the purpose of that then if it only applies to them? It just, so you don't get these big signs on there. There's no problem with that. They're, they're on other, other roads. This is in there. This is on this the is in there uh, on their footprint. I footprint. Just, in to me, it's like you're saying, okay, you can't put shades up over your solar panels. I don't think it has anything to do with shading the solar panels. I think that was the intent was more keep it clean to keep the site clean than anything. I guess is how I read it. To not fight signs, not have to address it downstream. No signs. Period. Don't have to fight them. I mean, we never have with the legal except signs. Except for safety signs yeah. and stuff. Which yeah, just a little fire. You're going to have something to stay out and whatever. Say, Marion County Cooperative Solar Farm. Yeah. Contact this for emergencies. It's going to have all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's all like, I don't, I don't but that's know what other there. sign they'd want to put up. Well, it just you don't have to address it. We're taking that question out of their hands. Yep. You're not going to have to answer that's that. Right. You, you don't, don't know. Sign. We don't know. We don't. Yeah, we're done. No signs. Sounds good. But we talked a little bit about in uh, just in deals with screen. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. M? No, the signs. Yeah, M. Why would we want to control signage? What's that to our business? How the property owner does that? I will disagree with it. Yeah, no, it's not something that's ridiculous. That's kind of what I was saying. I don't know what I was doing. Then you could change it to all signage on a sex uh, installation must be negotiated with zoning and plan. Yeah. 
or you could just How about must drop be? signage as an issue. Just question mark by because there's going to be some of that. This, the signage you have exempt in here is going to be required by some kind of regulation when it's it OSHA or because where it says except for safety. I mean, OSHA is going to require those signs. So, yeah, we've got so, to say, and we want a project sign. We want to say, yeah, so, this is so and so's. So I'm so just so saying, if you don't even mention the word signs in this thing, we're good to go. That's what I'm saying. We, we've got a whole set of sign regulations. And so just refer it, say all signage must meet. I was just saying you don't even have to say sign signage. Don't say just take it out. What do you say? Any objections to striking it? It's gone. It's gone. So in just deals again with uh, making sure that their site plan, their site layout tries to take advantage of uh, hedgerows when possible, you know, just uh, that there may be additional landscape screening requirements depending on the location of the project and the impacts it may or may not have. Why well, the only sentence in that whole thing that means anything to me is the last one. Landscaping and or screening may be required to help screen the facility. The rest of it is it should be located to get uh, they're gonna do that. Yeah I think they're yeah. gonna do all that on their own. Unless they're idiots, well, yeah, that, they that's right back. On it, eight acres, let them. Yeah, I mean that's that goes back to that one we was talking about earlier. They should. You're right. They shouldn't use shading. They shouldn't shade it. Really, the only one to see, to me, was the last sentence. Yeah. That says, but that's me. Yeah, because you may be required to put some vegetation along here because landowner X Y Z says. I'll buy into it if someone puts up some spirea bushes. The first sentences to me are we're getting dangerously close into helping to design the areas. You know, put them here, put them there, don't put them here, don't put them, you know, that's. So is the consensus to strike everything but the last sentence? Well, the question, <laughs> concern I have with the last, I, I never like to see regulations. I mean, this is really regulations, right? That's and exactly then when, you, yes. when you put may and maybes and I mean you're you're, you're it's kind of like should oh, be yeah. either are you are landscaping or screening will be required I think well if, I'm, I'm uh, saying I'm well, saying yeah. right you got to put the last sentence in some sort of context in my opinion I'm that saying, second sentence is appropriate I mean, we can certainly strike out the one of those two sentences, one of the two first sentences, but what are we trying to say in one sentence? It, it, it's a warning that that you come in with your project, your uh, property owner that you're leasing that property from, or buying or buying it from, and the neighbors that you've talked to may not care about screening whatsoever, so you don't have to provide landscaping or screening, but you get the right location with the wrong people around it that that are objecting. To the views this is putting them on notice that it is not a standard requirement we do not have a prescriptive landscape code in the county that's going to say one deciduous tree every 50 feet plus three evergreen trees every 30 feet we're not prescribing anything with this but landscaping but is a telling. common practice that it's required on all kinds of projects all over everywhere in cities, in sure. cities, it is absolutely aesthetics and stuff. They require that. Well, yeah. well, that's, what, that's what he's saying that it may be required. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's all I'm saying is yeah, the last sentence that said landscaping and screening may be required to so, because so they don't want it to. They say it. We so what he's saying is, if it's on the edge of the city limits, you might be looking at screening. If it's out in the middle of no bad gun place. We can, not, care. Not we can have a solar farm screen. with no trees and no vegetation and for miles. Happy. Or we can have one that these people are going to have to plant a thousand feet of something. And everyone will be happy once you plant it. Yeah. So this is putting this is putting a developer on notice that even though we do not, when you read our code, we don't have a section that prescribes exactly how you landscape the project. But 
when you roll into the CUP, that's on the table for negotiation. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that last sentence. So that's the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. How, how's it worded for junkyard? Because uh, screening is required for junkyards. They, Standard, but they fence. put everything you outside. You see it. Anyway. You fence whatever you can stack crap as high as your fence. Okay. On, so on, is everyone good with just the last sentence? And, and keep in mind that other reasonable accommodations can be required in the conditions of every specific CUP. So if there's something that this site is particularly lacking or whatever in order for them to make this project work in our community, we can say, okay, you need to plant. Yeah. It's just yeah, and that's addressed in paragraph T. There you go. Any other issues or concerns? <laughs> um, you know, I honestly can't recall where we ended up with, with prescribed burning and fire risk on the wax. We, we altered that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yep, let me pull that up. So while Sharon's looking at the prescribed burning on O, on, on, on P, we're just talking about we don't want these things to be lit up like a, like a natural gas plant where you can see that thing from two townships away. Um, so we, we just have um, what I would consider a very extensive <laughs> requirement on <coughs> lighting sources. Mm -hmm. uh, prescribed burning. So so with, with P, I mean that that could also get killed down to the last two sentences. On O, you say potential fire risk. It should be risk, but that's such a net point. It should be plural. Like that. They're gonna start calling you me. You trained me well. Hold on, I thought they. Were, I thought that uh, paragraph O. Is that what she's talking about? Yeah, she was looking up. Yeah, that she's looking up. It's yeah. already been edited beyond this period. Oh, yes. So. It, I would assume we'll probably pull the wax. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Do you want to hear what? The yeah. Would you read it, please? Have to say, yeah. Article twenty-seven, the current version. Um, the application shall include fire mitigation and action plan and address high angle rescue. It is important to be aware that prescribed burning or range burning is a common practice in Marion County. Mitigation plans are to show how the towers and equipment are protected from fire within the site and from fire originating from outside the site. Prescribed burning is defined as the controlled application of fire to naturally occurring or naturalized vegetative fuels under specific environmental in parentheses weather conditions in accordance with the county specified rules and regulations. So we're looking at something that is everything but the high angle rescue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Most everything. We got that. Angle. So we don't even need to I could just pull out and adjust yeah. it to this. Yep. Yeah. And I think P could probably be truncated to say no lighting over uh, 15 feet in height um, and shall be shielded uh, to, to cast at a downward angle as to not spill onto the adjacent uh, partial. So like the first six words in the last two sentences? Yeah. You know, we don't want to get into candle feet. Uh, the city of Andover has a site plan review where you have to have candle foot maps of your commercial development. And there's nobody in that, in, there's no, not any, not only is there nobody in, in the city of Andover city council chambers that know what a candle foot is, there's nobody in the city of Andover. Uh, but nonetheless, you have to have these lighting diagrams and charts from a, uh, from a designer. So again, as I mentioned, uh, these are as extensive of a list of things that you could check into to a chapter as, as I can find, and not everything here has to be. We certainly don't want necessarily dark sky compliant. Um, that's more of an urban situation. And again, out in the county, I don't know what typical halogens get when you, when you throw them up 30 feet. How, how a parking lot lights described? Because that's basically what you're getting at. 
like the lights that light this parking lot. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that you know, if your if your farm can have two or three of those, that's what. Yeah. They're probably, However, that's worth. They're that's probably what they're at twenty looking. or thirty between twenty and thirty feet, and a parking standard commercial parking lot is twenty four feet, including the base. Yes, yeah, so that's what. Whatever that wording is, that's. Twenty foot plus four foot base. We probably got that somewhere, don't we, Sharon? Um, we have so. lighting for turbine towers. No light source greater than, or sorry, it's actually just a site. No light source greater than one the candle. No. So we're still. <laughs> we're we're still no. directed <laughs> onto any public. Right? You know, there's no, there's no zoning regulations on like parking lot lights or street lights or. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That wording is probably pretty close to what you're looking at. Isn't it? I mean, there's something in here that says security or safety lighting shall be designed to avoid excess light trespassing glare. That's usually what we always deal with. We don't talk in Wichita, for example, we don't deal with foot candles. That what you we use. deal with direction of light yes. uh, and light height. Right. As the well, what she just said, I think, is what we're looking for here, isn't it? But if your farm can have a 25 foot standard halogen light, we want to regulate these. I'm just saying, make sure that your light isn't glaring like a wall pack into somebody's, into somebody's yard. Room. So I, don't, I think we can pare that down. Wind energy. Yeah. yeah. Their shop lights might be a new one. Are they? They forget to turn them off. Yeah, I can. I can see them from seven miles out of town. Some of the new lighting along the state highways is getting to be that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They put those eyes. Purple. Yeah. <clears throat> Q deals with this decommissioning plan. And there again, it's in here for discussion. Um, as with wind turbines, there is an idea that if you are pro wind energy and you want to see as many turbines pop up across the country as possible, you don't want to have mm -hmm. decommissioning agreements. Uh, and your argument for not wanting decommissioning agreements is that the materials within that wind turbine are of value to the point where somebody will salvage that wind turbine and not leave it up. That hasn't really proven to be 100% effective. Uh, there are wind turbines that have been bought and decommissioned and sold, various parts sold for scrap. And there are certainly projects that are rusting. It's a rusty X wind farm uh, forest so there again um, I thought if we did it for WEX uh, is there a need to do it for these solar farms well, part of the thing you're going to be different is your structure itself I mean if you we don't have to worry about burying the footings yeah you don't got to or do we well even if you do, I, I mean, it's like tearing down a farmhouse and, yeah. and reclaiming the farm ground with the with, with the solar panel, with a turbine. It's like now you got to call in special equipment and all kinds, of, you know. So it's, it's a almost whole, as impactful as the construction project. Yes. Here you're getting a backhoe and just yeah, you can get a, those, you get a track going in an hour and a half. I've got Lindsberg clipped up. <laughs> but, but how they're doing it is irregardless of having the plan. I mean, yeah, it's the yeah. fact whether you have the plan, require the plan or don't have the plan. I think that's what we're after here. Well, they know up front that they got to worry about decommissioning. It's, if, if it is defunct, then yeah, they have you to clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we're asking, you know, are they going to be bonded? That's what I'm saying. I don't think we're asking for that. And so if they go bankrupt, then they get cleaned up. And all that, all I have to do is file bankruptcy and pop up on another company and then we go to old, old junk up there. Oh, it'll see and walk away. Mm -hmm. So we have no guarantee, we have nothing there. So if we're serious, then we gotta have money. Gotta have a bond. I don't know how expensive that is to get a long term bond like that. I don't think tower. it's near as serious as the. I mean, like for the wind towers, what kind of expense did we put on them? But we made them do that, didn't we? Yes. No, no. I'm not familiar with the one here. You know, Reno County, we kind of got midway through that and started doing the math. And it's, I mean, of course, oh, next era is not going to like it, but it's a reasonable expectation. I wouldn't say 100,000 towers, what I remember. Really? I was thinking that enough. project was going to have a 
bond of about one and a half million dollars, and I'm not sure what the construction. So that's what they been. had to set aside for each tower. Uh, I'm in a security bond. I'm thinking. I mean, don't bond. quote me on that, but that seems like <clears throat> because when we started thinking about it, it's like, can't yeah, wait a minute. After you've lived over there and stared at it every day and you think of stuff that you don't think about. Well, this here, like, the bond would reflect the, the scope of the Just cost. to get that, then yeah. bring that yeah. whole cost exactly. you $100,000. You got one and a half million on, uh, on a wet system. This, okay, it's not going to take that. At least you have the money. <coughs> yeah, because they probably zero value. Right. Well, if we have this with the wax and a bond, we should have, if we have this with this, we should still have a bond also. Yeah, we should have a bond. It's just going to be smaller peanuts. I mean, yeah, right. but it still should be yeah. money set aside. Mm -hmm. bond for, for a bond purchase. Mm -hmm. Cover. Because it's fast the technology changes, you know, they say they last, it, what, 20 years or whatever we're talking about. What's the business version of security? Walk away from it. Think of it as an insurance policy where a certain percentage of the project's overall construction, or the, the estimated cost of decommissioning it, you put up like 10% of that as a in an escrow account or a bond through a financial institution. Okay. So that's basically like a security And then you get it back apartment. once you do the decommissioning. So it's, it's basically like the security deposit on an apartment. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In simple terms, exactly. that is exactly mm -hmm. that way. It, 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 all it is is an expense right. that the developer wants to get away with. So that's why they kind of the whisper super in your ear, hey, we're going to be doing these pilot agreements and these road agreements and these supplemental uh, checks to help offset government staff costs. Hey, we don't need that. Well, one might be three million dollars, and then you're going to spend thirty thousand dollars. Like, ah, we're we're so did we say Q says we're going to change that to basically security bond? There's there's language I can put in there that talks about bonding. Yeah. Yeah, that what everyone. It's, it's, yeah. it's a still still. De it's just a political decommissioning plan, yeah. but with a bond. Yeah. 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 I think so. R. We're trying to get it. Yeah, because the, 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 the expense on that shouldn't be near what it is on one point. There's fifty thousand security per turbine. Fifty. <laughs> See, uh, that's why I said not near. Okay. There might no, be sorry, sorry, one hundred and thirty dollars decommissioning security per turbine. One hundred thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there may be fifty thousand for the entire uh, solar farm. Right. Maybe thirty. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be. We'll look into that. Yeah. yeah. For that big walk away, yeah. I would not do anything for fifty thousand. You know, in turbine. Yeah. Not with a turban, but with well, see, that money comes up front. I mean, it's a security bond, right, so yeah, right. you can trash your apartment. And <laughs> yeah, and see it, get all the fun out of there, <laughs> rip all the copper out. Let's just see what's going to be the commission. The turban we call an A10s. That's just <laughs> Smoky Hill is, is closer here. To yeah, they're on the way to the bomb range yeah. anyway. I know 10 of the piles. So, so R again. R and S are going to be very familiar from, from ours, but, but R is, uh, you know, whether or not we require a power purchase agreement similar to WEX. I think if we're going to do bonds similar to WEX, I think we should probably require them to have some sort of PPA, again, to, as, as an ante into the game, to show, you know, that adds to the legitimacy of the project, I would think. And we are talking about those that are going to be a utility scale wind solar farm. They're selling it to the Southwest Power Pool. Yeah, so R, we nice. said basically go look at the wax and make sure they're very similar. That should be pretty, I think that's more or less similar. Keep the con in out. It's another way to help keep the con in out. So we'll add, we'll, we'll compare. And S is, uh, I think S is exactly what we have for WEX that we added. It's one of the latest additions to Article 27, and that, as we found sitting here uh, on Doyle, Doyle 4, uh, is uh, we want these things to don't apply until you're two or three years out is kind of the point of this. Don't come in here for zoning authority. We realize that it takes a while to, to get this plane up, up off the ground, but um, if you're not commencing after two years uh, after approval, then you either need to, to 
file an amendment to the project or, uh, or start construction. So again, this takes care of the issue that we had under our first generation of wind farm uh, regulations that didn't have a stipulation. Uh, they left uh, homeowners, God, no pun intended, twisting in the wind. <laughs> As twice today, I you're pretty proud of yourself, aren't you? Uh, I'm, I'm aging out of my profession. Yeah, right start now. your own podcast. Right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I might just keep driving. But these are podcasts less intense and should be easily done on a yeah. shorter time. Yeah. 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 And at one point I didn't know the construction time, time frame, but um, that project was done in months. I was going to say, I would assume two years is pretty comfortable for, for these projects. But, and, and there is there is a need, again, my day job, when I represent clients, there is a certain need that, look, we got to get the zoning established now before we take one step or spend one more dime on, on the due diligence. We need that zoning up front. But I think the two-year time frame is more than generous with the idea that you can get an extension yeah. before you have to come back. The, the thing Derek said... I'd like to just talk on just for a second. Two years for WEX, is two years still the same bandwidth required for this solar? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think I need to edit some of this stuff out because we're not requiring development plans. I guess we kind of are. Never mind. It's two, yeah. two years still valid. We'll have a, we'll have a CEP development plan. This right, whole thing is right. development. Well, I'm sorry, is two years still valid? For are we comparing an apple to an apple, or an apple to an orange? You know, a uh, solar putting solar arrays seems like uh, should take you about one month to put a farm up. But this is Wait, saying, maybe two months through the concrete. But this is saying you have to get the power purchase agreement before you can. So those processes are probably still the same. The PPA, yeah. the all the government approval. So we feel comfortable that they're. Uh, they're saying PPAs right now can take up to four years to get right now today. Yeah. So this may well, isn't be that where you were going? Yeah, and preparing. I think after I, after you said it, what I what came to me, I guess, is it's more of the get all the, the paper, stuff. all yeah. the paperwork in line, not it's not the to build it outside of Marion County. That they're yeah. Yeah. Do. Not yeah. to actually build it once they get their construction permit. Yeah, that's the fast part. Just so, want to, us here we want to be able to validate why we came up with the two years is the only thing. The, it, it, it all falls under the energy that. systems. And that's what Sedgwick County did. And of course, they're so first line, they strike out. Apples, pretty yeah. much. Okay, good enough. Sedgwick County generally treated wind and solar as the same under the same umbrella of re renewable energy systems. And then they cut out wind energy. So it's A, wind energy is prohibited in Sedgwick County, and then B has three pages of stuff. Okay. So good enough. I guess it's more like the interconnect agreement, things like that, would take that much time. EPA approval, all the... You can't get your EPA until you have your interconnect, though, right? I don't think so. Yeah, that so, was a point of contention before. So it could take a long time. Yeah. All right. And T is the catch-all. Yeah. So I think we got... Any last minute edits, and if you think of something, you can always email Sharon or I. Um, I will write this up and get it out to you. If we feel comfortable that we are close enough to have a public hearing on this, we can always we can always have a public hearing scheduled for August and then continue it. Right. Russ, I'm curious. I, if I understood you correctly, your opening comments were such that. Not all of these would you anticipated being in there, but yet I had see a check mark on my documents that said, well, "Yeah, I good. think we added we're good. one. We're good with editing. <laughs> with editing, I guess. Oh. I mean, are, are, are there some? Wow, these guys. We took him out. out on that. We took him out. We, 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 edit, but each, we took I, him out, but but K got divided right. in half. I, <laughs> yeah, we took one out. Okay. But, but we all, but, but we, we all had an editing. opportunity to talk. I, I'm just. I'm, yeah. I'm just You're curious. asking him? I'm asking him if there is like... If Why did we <laughs> miss the easy ones that you said to get rid of? Or, or are, you, are, are you comfortable with the edits and the, I, and, yeah. the, and the, the list? Uh, no, uh, it's kind of like being a, a short order cook. you, you got to tell me what you want. Uh, it, 
but but it's not necessarily the length of these conditions it's the number of conditions do we want to deal with road maintenance agreements in, with sex like we did with wex the answer is i'm hearing yes or i yes. didn't hear anybody yes. say no do we want to deal with powerpoint or powerpoint pbas with this i think so they're similar i mean they have that similar dynamic uh, do we care if wires are underground, transmission lines are above ground or overhead? Okay, you know, when those I'm saying, are the comments I appreciate. And, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, okay, I'm, I'm just and curious. We'll, and, like, and we'll have a month, we'll have a month with these. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to change. We're not going to, I'm not going to throw extra stuff in there that's going to be yeah. out of left field. No, I'm going to no. clarify some of this stuff. And then when I write the memo for the August meeting, I can add some you know, some notes in there saying here's where this came from or we didn't talk about this but I think this is important and I've seen it here here and here consider this so it will it'll facilitate a little bit better a quicker discussion next time I, I was myself I think we did an excellent job as a group to chug through a sure. pretty heavy lifting type bunch of stuff and we get it, it the, should make as many people around the table it should make the approval process maybe a little easier. Um, you know, we've sat down and talked through most of these. There's going to be some little things, sure. little edits. Well, You're I think what Dwight was saying was originally you assumed it was like regulate as little as possible, then we accept it all. But my comment that I didn't make earlier when I was hearing that was you said it comes federal to state that the actually state Trump's federal on this stuff, and everybody kind of doesn't understand that because the state can say, "Here's what we want," so we don't necessarily have to accept everything that comes down to federal. This is kind of I think I think Dwight's point, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, we started out like on the WEX stuff; it was kind of broad, a little vague, and you wanted your point was to come at this with something with some merit to it, yeah. rather than just we want to regulate it. We don't know how yet. Right, right, but I, but I'm I saying good at where we are at. I mean, yeah, I I'm just I'm just saying that when we started out, and he was talking about one of the options is no regulations. Uh, you get three or four, we'll go more. Don't think it was regulate less or more. Right. That's so to say, don't you? I guess kudos to us. Unless there's an objection, we bring we set the public hearing. Yeah. Bring a bring our edited. Good job. You'll have an edited memo. We can. You know, if there's more to talk about, then we can talk about it. If not, we can move on. Yeah, um, Joe. We don't have yeah. to do it, but we can let the certainly flex. Well, there's nothing. There's no problem with shipping the commissioners that we know either. I mean, the public. We have to have yeah. a public process anyway, so yeah. we just will get started on that. Um, anybody else have anything on that? If not, we'll move on. To the next item, which is CAFOs. Item number four. I think last last month we, uh, or in May, we agreed uh, to prohibit CAFOs, right? Just prohibit them out of county. I don't know if we quite agreed to that. <laughs> that's, his, that's his third attempt at humor today, so he's doing pretty good. You're getting there, Ralph. I don't know where you're headed with that one, but <laughs> out of town. Sounds like. Yeah. I'll have some very yeah, excellent neighbors when I get home. Yeah. So, I'm, trying to get shot. I'm trying to get shot, and I know you guys are all good shots. So maybe one will do Where do you live? <laughs> I'll tell you, there's a couple good shooting angles driving south on Sunflower. You can. can I report just a couple of things, some questions that were asked Certainly. about KDAG? Yeah. Um, last, at the last meeting, there were some questions asked that I wanted to address real quickly. So um, I was able to get some limited information from the state about the KDHE, their Environmental Field Services Livestock Waste Management Section. Um, there are approximately five permitted facilities in Marion County with a thousand or more animal units permitted through five okay. permitted through KDAG. All right, and about 43 facilities with less than 100 animal units, and then 112 active certifications. These are not permits, but 
they're in compliance and they're registered. The difference is what triggers a KDHE permit is a man-made waste structure. So if they need a, some sort of sewage lagoon or retention facility, that's what triggers that KDHE permit. Um, How many were those for that last one? You said 100 and... 112? So... The 112 well, wouldn't no, be a... No. So, no one of the five. so that's what triggers a permit through KDHE or significant pollution potential. So you may only have 40 dairy cows, but dairy cows produce more, you know, those facilities produce more, yeah, more concentrated waste. So they would also trigger that. Um, Does location tie into that? Like if you're near a creek? If you're over a certain animal unit, you're going to be required to have some sort of uh, waste yeah. mitigation came out of Certainly on CAFOs, how we did it, how they, uh, uh, with a thousand animal units, there's only five in operation in the county. So That's five, the only thing we regulate, are those five. Mm -hmm. Five or five permitted facilities in the county with a thousand or more animal units. 43 in the county are facilities with less than a thousand animal units. So that's a total of roughly 48 so just under 50 permitted facilities in Marion County through KDHE and then there's this whole other category called active certifications <coughs> so there are 112 <coughs> certifications that means they're not permitted but they're in compliance and they're registered so they may not have they may have some of that pollution potential but they're more if they're not as concentrated and they, uh, they don't have to have the man-made structures so they may be on pasture or and the grass strips yes, on their watershed spread out enough Bring that they didn't it's, have to they didn't be. trigger for me. and then thank you sir so the, the purpose of those permits is more geared towards groundwater protection and, and environmental issues um, they do, it's a five year permit. They do inspections at least once during that five years, unless there's a complaint, and then that triggers an inspection. Then there's also a KDA, Kansas Division of Animal Health. They do a licensing, and that's if you're feeding more than 1,000 head of livestock. And the purpose of that license is more um, like disease trace, disease traceability. <coughs> so they want to know how many head of cattle are where and where are those cattle going. And then there's also the EPA requires, it, it's an NPDES permit, which is national pollution discharge whatever the ES I can't remember wow it really just left me but so those are the different types of licensing permitting certifications and things required for those feeding operations and I'll turn it over to us so you're basically saying we have about just shy of 50 with permits? Yes. But only five that are federal permitted. Right. Because it's all based on animal units. So 299, any, anything over 1,000 is a federal permit. Mm -hmm. 299 and up to 999 is a state permit. Anything under 299 would be those 130, I think you said, which are certified. Yes, and, and actually it's like <clears throat> the minimum EPA thresholds differs, so it could be 700 head of mature dairy cows, 1,000 head of field cows. It's, it's based off animal units. Yes, it could be 5,000 ducks. Because you could have... It's the 1,000 <laughs> You could You could be, so a federal, so you could have your, your state facility and you have 1,200 head of young calves there that you're feeding that weigh 500 pounds 
well, you're not over the thousand threshold because it's only seven seven hundred and over is an animal unit, and so anything right. under that is half an animal unit. Right. Yes. There's an equation. It's basically based on how much waste is right. produced in the, in the concentration right. of that waste. But that's that's how they nominalize it is with animal <coughs> units. And with that, we're getting rid of it all. <coughs> so, uh, from, from, from May's uh, discussion, um, we saw a desire to eliminate. Right now, we've got two things. We simply go uh, confined feeding operations or feedlots and stockyards with definitions for both of those uses. Uh, and when we talk about uh, feedlots, that would be where the cathodes of a thousand animal units, that's the raising of livestock, and that's what we wanted to get away from. And again, kind of similar to what we talked about with solar, if the state regulates it, and we are by, bound by a law that we can't regulate it beyond those measures, what are we doing in the game? And so we're taking ourselves out of the game as it, as it deals with cathodes, confined feeding operations. But in looking at the definition of stockyards, that's the temporary concentrated storage of animals on their way either outside of a processing plant or outside of an old timey rail yard where you're getting shipped off. Those are temporary, those aren't for the raising of it. That's not necessarily, that's for the temporary storage of animals. And so we're, at least as far as this memory like a packing goes, plant. A packing plant would have the storage. Would have a stockyard. Okay, I see. Sorry. A, a IDP does not have, or Cargill does not have a feedlot. They have stockyard. I see. They're not being fed. For, right. right. It's hauling them to the processing plant and storing them outside is what a, more or less a stockyard is under our definition, at least of our intent. So we started talking about the only thing, you know, when we talked in May, we, we discussed a little bit about, well, we don't want to get in the game of this, and all the legal uh, entanglements deal with confined feeding operations. And it gets tricky when you start looking at the definition of ag exempt and feeding lot and feed lots, right? I mean, is so we define it by animal units because that's what Dave used as a trigger. If you needed a federal permit, you needed local zoning, and we've come to the conclusion that that's something that we don't want to regulate anymore. But we would want to have a say if Tyson comes in with the chicken processing plant and we want to deal with the environs around a processing plant, perhaps. So I pivoted from, I mean, uh, from taking out the feedlot CAFO situation for, for regulations and pivoted to, do we perhaps want to call this an animal processing plant? And there again, to use uh, Osage County is an example. I'm not really sure that they're a big livestock feeding county, but boy, every other person in that county wants to slaughter animals, uh, maybe up to 20 to 50 head a, a week. And these are like small little operations. Well, you start looking at sanitation codes, the amount of infrastructure that they need from KDHE to process the waste that comes even from slaughtering, say, 50 head a week, is pretty extensive. So we deal with slaughterhouses on a small farm scale all the time. And it's, I, I think they just need to be better, maybe not better regulated, but I think they need to be better explained in our zoning code. So I've come up with this proposed or keep commercial stockyard as a defined land use. But within the definition of agricultural purposes land use for, we talk about you're permitted all these things. And we specifically define what ag agricultural is not. And so uh, at item H, we exempt out of ag exempt the operation of a stockyard or a feed yard. And we want to change that, or I'm suggesting to change that as you are not ag exempt if you are operating or maintaining a commercial stockyard or agricultural processing uh, facility 
unless you have a conditional use permit. So if Tyson comes in or Cargill comes in for a processing plant, a meat, meat packing plant, I think it would be my opinion that we'd want to regulate that based on all the impacts that those facilities have and certainly the fact that they have been run out of at least six Kansas counties. So uh, I've redefined the, the definition of agricultural purposes in proposing to strike the definition and thereby the regulation of commercial feedlots. Commercial stockyards would be left unchanged and then I talk about this new use definition, and that is agricultural processing. And it's the commercial aggregation, storage, processing, and di distribution of farm products. Examples include grain elevators, livestock auction yards, commercial stockyards, commercial slaughter facilities, or a rendering plant. Um, and ex except out, because again, from Osage County experience, we get into a lot of situations where uh, actually, one great example, and I think we have one here in the county, uh, uh, there is uh, three quarters of a section, more or less, they don't have sections quite like we, we have. Uh, there, there's about um, 200 acre, 250 acres of a game preserve. So you go out there, you stay in their awesome little cabins, and you go out there and you hunt for a weekend with your buddies. And what they wanted to do is add, if you take a, if you take a, uh, a deer, we'll process it. While you sit there in the bar and drink and watch the game, we'll process it for you. Or you can process it with us. We'll teach you how to process a deer on site. And so, since we didn't know what to do with it, we made them get a CUP. But we also want to we also want to make sure that if you guys go out on a weekend and y'all get two deers and you want to process it at Chase's house, we're not going to make it see you. You're not a slaughterhouse for that purpose. So we want to make sure that individual slaughtering, and, and the same thing for cattle. If you're slaughtering for personal use or your brother-in-law or whatever, as long as you're not retailing to the public, I can't drive up and get a quarter beef from you. Then, then you don't need a CUP. So there again, similar to the other regulations, there's a there's a certain amount of activity that we want to see for personal use or for, for family use. But if you're retail or commercial or industrial, uh, then we want to make you come through and get a CUP. So in general, that's the idea of eliminating CAFOs, keeping stockyards in place as it relates to an animal or an agricultural processing facility. And kind of beef up again. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, in four rounds. Is that four, Brad? Um, that's, that's, that's three of his. Did that's you plan right. all? I think you have these all wrote down. Yeah, somewhere. he does. He's got both. Oh, You've been when, I drive up, when I drive up here, my look in my mind is blank. Oh, boy. 100%. No. They've all been pathetic, but you are trying. <laughs> Not getting very far, but you're trying. He's had two months to plan these. I just turned 53. What do you expect? Um, so, um, and then when we talk about uh, conditional uses, we're, we're talking about that same stockyard and animal and agricultural processing facility. And then we just I, I'm throwing out four standard conditions for their CUP. So if, if Tyson comes in here with a processing facility, uh, they're going to have to get a CUP and they are going to have to do these things that talk about, again, <clears throat> all the federal and state permits and regulations that they have to abide by. We want them to address those with us. Uh, again, they need to identify the primary issue beyond noise and smell, um, which is just kind of tough luck in rural America. But uh, the, the sanitation, the facilities, the, the catch bait, what are you gonna do with the offal and the blood? What are you going to do with the waste generator from the stockyard before you, the animals get processed? And what are you going to do with the weight, with the wash water once your processing uh, is complete? Those are that is usually number one, two, and three of the problems associated with such facilities. So, again, they need to identify how they're going to handle it, and if they're a large facility, they're going to have those permits in hand. And so, um, but if they're a smaller operation still open for retail. 
it's going to fall under the county sanitation code and requirements for, for how you're going to deal, that, deal with that. Thing. Now you mentioned smell, but that's really not regulated, is that correct? Right, I'm saying of all the things that I've heard in public discourse, the problems with, the with, problem would be smell. with, with, with animals, <laughs> with, with slaughterhouses, is it's going to smell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go give yourself a house in, uh, in Olathe. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, that's kind of codified in state law, right to farm, all these other things, ag exempt. I mean, the, we hear it, but that's something we're not, we don't deal with in, 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 in these CUPs. And just as you point out, it'll be the number it's, one complaint. It's, it's, it's the number one complaint. Uh, but but the number one problem that can be dealt with is is what you're going to do with the animal byproduct, and so um, most places have uh, contracts with people like Cargill that will haul that stuff off and make dog food out of it or what have you. So uh, legitimately, uh, there there's some processor up in in Topeka that takes it from Osage County facilities. Uh, we just want to. There, there's a system for it. We just want to make sure that they yeah. do that, that they're going to do that. Uh, and again, uh, depending on the size of the facility, the road maintenance agreement, just like any other, probably more important than any other thing that we have, including WEX, is animal hauling. Which, when these plants go out in the sticks, that's a lot of truck traffic, uh, and so that's probably the number one land use in a rural county that's going to really need and, and uh, the county would benefit from some sort of road maintenance agreement. Um, and again, uh, we, yes sir. You've been talking about the, the packing plants, which uh, there's none in Marion County. Uh, and, and I guess what I'm and there may at never is be big, one in Marion County. I, I guess County. I'm looking at the bigger picture of, of taking out the feedlots. I mean, I, I'm, uh, and just, is there, if I wanted to start a, like a five, 700 head feedlot up there and Clear Creek on the quarter out there. I, I would. I'd have to come and get some kind of a cup here, or, a, or there. No, that's not regulated. You do. Right now. You, you, oh, right, right. No, you don't. I don't. I don't. If you, if you have a thousand and one head of cattle. Right. Okay. Yes. I guess that's what I'm getting at is the fact that you know just. And uh, we know that there's not. You, many you wouldn't have them. to do that. Um, I mean, today you don't do that. You just. Uh, you you, you right don't, but you're supposed, supposed to. to. There's only five. Five operations that right, right. would have regulated. Not, this is under that. This is in that 43 yeah. there. That was a 43. So I can open that up and no one, I'd have Tomorrow. to just commit, i just have to go to the state and regulate it. Right, exactly. Even, I just want to clarify. I just want yeah. to make sure I understood that. And they have setbacks from other property owners. I guess like, what I worry about is what we're doing is we're, we're relying, okay, I'm, I'm carry through this. Uh, I don't. I don't want to regulate all the details of a feedlot, yeah. and I don't think Ameri uh, you know our zoning wants to go out there and try to figure out how many square foot that needs to be for every head of an animal. But I'm more worried about the state potentially coming back saying, "Well, you can't have a feedlot up there in some place because we we basically washed our hands of it and said, okay, the state's going to take care of it." And if the state, I'm just being the yep. devil's advocate here. I mean, I'm, we can't do what the state doesn't. What's that? We can't do more than the state. We can't. Correct, do the but state if the job. state shut it down, said you cannot have, you know, because right now the, you're you have to just conform to their regulations. They allow you, but they're it's regulated. Then we'll, hear let, me through. then we'll let the state have that battle. I know, but the thing is, if the state says I do not, I will not. They they could come back in a year or five years with. Whatever political direction we find, the green thing coming up. Exactly, they could sit there and say we don't want to have anybody to have a. I mean, we can't override that. So you're right. saying you build your yard, your 700 head yard. Nobody cares about you right now. The state comes back and says, No, no, no. no in in se in seven years when I do want to do it, they yeah, would they say, say you can't do it because we we are letting we're, we're we've washed our hands of it. So I, I guess I'm trying to no, think it I through. I'm saying. I'm what he's through. saying is, is right now that it reverts back to the state. But he's saying if the state ever ever relinquishes control of that, what happens? No, well, makes no, it no, more no, stringent. Still, he's no, saying, what he's, what he's he saying more, is, if the state makes it more stringent than what they are today, exactly. 
we, it, we still can't do anything about that's that. A good, that's a point because we are, I'm just thinking this through yeah. here and I'm trying to make sure that. You'll have to look it up under civil disobedience and see if you want to learn it again. That's why I wanted to make sure that we have open out on the table good here because point. of the fact that we are then <clears throat> relinquishing uh, sort of, and once again, they're controlling it even today. The state's today. controlling here's, it today. Here's what we're, we're, we're not controlling. The road maintenance agreement associated with those cathos. That's okay. the only thing that we can do is dictate That's a good point. Okay. where it can go. We can't dictate how it operates. I understand. But I'm just, yeah. I'm just I don't know. Make, I'm saying that yeah, you have a valid operation. You're probably got, your first step is probably getting four votes at the county commission. <laughs> I mean, there's not a practical, there's, in my opinion, and I think it was kind of validated by conversations that I had with Sharon, is <laughs> they're, they're really, this court case that everybody points to, especially the KLA, KLA, is right for the meat of what a CUP tries to do, and that's provide regulation on a location by location, case by case basis. We can't do anything there's that the teeth. state, yeah. the, the state's the, 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 the state's the bouncer. You don't need two bouncers, I understand. especially if one can't do anything legally. Yes. The only thing that we could do is get them into a public forum and require that they take road X and not road Y. Okay. That's all you have. I mean, I think that's that was the whole there, and that's going to be something that they can work out with the commission and the township people on all roads because that's mutually beneficial. If you have a thousand head CAFO, you're gonna you're gonna be talking to your township people on that road, and you're gonna work at a, where you're gonna work it all out because your trucks need that road to be as good as the, the, the other property owners. But I guess to answer my own question, I guess if the state's gonna shut it down, even if we were zoned in it, they could st they would still they shut down. They trump us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wanted to think yeah. it through. Yeah. Is it there a statute that says that the counties can't put Anything in enforcement that is tighter than the KDA, yeah, no, correct? The yeah, state, we can't. Right? Well, so we can there is a court case. The state says that. you can't have more than ten cows. Well, we wants to have a thousand cows. We can't permit him to do that. No. We can't. We we can't override the so state. That's... And the state says he can say, have ten, and we can't say yeah, he can only have eight. So that's KSA correct. 19 yeah, that's right that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So that all came to fruition, I think, over the, the gun thing, didn't it? Whenever they said you can't, counties, because Cedric County was trying to say, you know, when the, when the governor said, okay, we got open carry and not, and we got carry without permits and stuff, and then Cedric County come in and said, oh, no, no, not us. You got to still do it for us. And that they said counties can't override the state. The same mechanism. So, not to get deep into statutes. Um, <laughs> so, the, the, the beauty of, of Kansas and its regulatory, or I should say, regulatory soft hand compared to other states in, in uh, America is we grant home rule authority and we grant home rule authority to cities separately and to counties separately and there are home rule provisions that the state has granted to the cities under the city home rule authority that counties don't and I'm not sure if it has anything to do with home rule authority but one of the great mechanisms for compliance in cities is if you don't keep your property up to snuff, the city maintenance guys can come in and mow your yard and we can assess you on your taxes. And if you don't pay your taxes, we can repo your house. So that's the carrot right. stick. The county does not enjoy that. So when we talk about this solar farm and the weeds growing, we can't go send a maintenance crew out there and mow that dude's uh, that facility unless uh, they're noxious weeds and, and, unless it's noxious weeds and assess them for it we don't have that stick and so what the court case said in Norton County was look you're applying county you're uh, Norton County you're applying the city the same city home rule authority you don't have that much authority you have this much authority compared to the cities so in a nutshell you can't set restrictions greater than what the state requires, period. Right. If, if they had a thousand foot setback, 
Norton County wanted a 15. And, and that, that the reason I like said that. the other yeah. is because yeah. it applies to everything, not just land. So home rule authority has its place in a lot of different statutes. And that gun regulation could easily, I could easily see that being the same type of yeah, macro, macro uh, statutory. That's kind of why problem. I was bringing that up, because it's not just weeds, it's not just roads, it's not just you. The county can't come up with something stricter than the state. In certain, yeah. Certain statutes like planning and zoning, it specifically allows that authority. But yeah, as a general home yeah, rule right. authority. Some areas they allow it. Some areas, like in, in terms of capital, what I read in the Norton case and all yeah. these things, and then the Sierra Club's coming in, and, and I, sent, I think I sent you an article yeah. on it. Sierra Club got Norton County, the Sierra Club. Uh, They're probably listening to us right now. There's uh, the the deposition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, 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 there was a group of people supporting Norton County's reg more intensive regulation of cathodes. They all went home with their hat in their hands. Farm Bureau KLA and and. Uh, the attorney general's office crushed that. I, uh, that was a fairly that was a fairly straightforward and crushing uh, win for 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 them. So the gist of you can't this it, is the gist of these changes are to say that why are we meddling in something we really don't have the authority? Yeah. Well, the the the, can, the, the teeth to enforce anything. We can't. Plus. Is that a policy that we want in a cattle raising county? You know, I mean, that's a, that, yes. you know, you can, you can get in different, you know, I mean, different parts of, of the state. You know, uh, I'm a row crop guy. I never raised a cow in my life and pastured some, but uh, what do I know about it? You've eaten so, huh? You've eaten plenty. <laughs> yeah, I've, certainly, I've certainly eaten plenty. But the, the point is, and I think, this was the maybe the first step towards this memo was look do we even want to regulate I mean is this we can't really regulate it in the truest form of regulation is this something that we even want to have on the books from a common sense standpoint and then Sharon brings up the fact that we never really regulated the five that we got yeah. so what do you do? Do you make them come in? It just creates a mess. And at the end of the day, what do you gain? Nothing. So you I think might that's lose a lot. You gain might lose. And hopefully, yeah. my so comment, my comment back to that, making sure we have, uh, re, you know, uh, freedom that we have here in the county. But I, I understand the, uh, uh, you know, they, they can trump it. They're, they're going to be uh, the authority that goes over. The and that's why I'm not a very good planner, is because most of us never have seen a regulation that we don't like or want to create. Uh, in my stand, in my point, you know, why have regulations on the books when they're not relevant, or if politically it's not sellable in your in your community? That's why you know we talk about WEX. It's like if you want it, say something. If you don't want it, we go that direction. So it's all you know. At the end of the day, we don't want to create regulations that are that are beyond the ability to enforce or, or maintain or monitor. <clears throat> so that's kind of where we're at with, with these and, and there's certainly everybody in this room is more knowledgeable about <clears throat> uh, these types of, of, of issues. But I but again, not a problem in my mind to do away with the CAFO stuff. Sorry Dave, you're up if you're at home watching that, uh, because he was involved with a lot of the creation of it. Um, I think most counties face a, a, a more reasonable expectation to have a, a processing plan of whatever size have a much larger impact on the community. And, and probably, we probably need to, again, expand our definition and provide some clarity as what that means. So again, uh, that's the purpose of that memo. Well, I'm like Brad with the uh, the other the solar stuff it was good to have it on a piece of paper to kind of see what we're talking about mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know if nobody has any further concerns. I said we throw it on a public hearing. And again, uh, something crops up. If you see something wrong with this, uh, what's in here, or want to see something expanded or eliminated, we can always it's make still those changes. fully editable. I mean, fully fluid. So, do we move forward on public hearings off of consensus, or do you need motions to move it to public hearing? Yeah. Do we need motions? I'll just like that. Did we do a motion? No, we yeah. didn't do a motion. I'd make a motion. We do both items for the public hearing. I second. Take that. It's been moved and seconded to put both items up for public hearing for next month. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. He slipped one by. It's all edible. Here. I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. For uh, keeping score here. Off agenda so, items. So I have one thing to bring to the board. And Some it's, <laughs> um, just a, and I can't find my notes now, of course. But. So there, there has been. There have been several people request to have a shipping container structure on like a suburban residential parcel um, for in the particular instances they keep they have a little shed out there and they're maintaining that piece of land they may go out there whatever to bird watch I don't know what they do but they keep their lawnmower and hand tools and things like that contained in the storage unit so that you know it's not as big of a theft <coughs> issue and so that the, the tract looks nicer it's cleaner so it's like a remote area yes it, it's a it's a five acre tract um, they had approached us about applying for a conditional use permit however it's specifically prohibited for <coughs> A shipping container to be permitted on a suburban residential or a, an R1 district. <coughs> However, it is allowed you can have one shipping container on like an agricultural tractor or rural residential. So we're talking the difference of five acres. You can, you cannot. And so the the thought was brought up that instead of it being prohibited, it be put more in like the special exception category to where it does go to a, a hearing and the, the planning commission can determine whether it's a good location for that and if it will be allowed or not. We've also had several people ask for one for a permit for a shipping container because they're moving here from wherever and they don't have anywhere to store their things right now um, whatever is happening in the market right now today has made building materials skyrocket yeah they're unaffordable we've had two or three residential permits that people walked away from because they just can't afford to build and if they could have kept their things in a shipping container for right now, because those are, you could buy a shipping container all day long, from what I understand, you know, it may have helped them out a little bit. What do, where do we stand as far as speaking to using that as a residence, tiny home mentality, right. converting so, shipping containers to living quarters? non-traditional structures we don't it, residences. we do not have building code we don't enforce building code out in the county um, if it's something that is on an axle that there are regulations that will be non-traditional that's how it be yeah uh, so I wrote a memo for Osage County about non-traditional structures as residences and uh, it was all due to this guy 
bought a round grain storage bin and put it next to the creek in the flood way <laughs> and got another one as the privy and going to live in there. So, you a problem with that? Not if you lock it That's from the outside. That's one of the problems that take care of, <laughs> takes care of the city. <laughs> <laughs> Sooner or later. Not if you weld them in there. But, uh, uh, there ain't very many of those problems. <laughs> that would be what I'm... Well, something just come to mind that we talked about earlier when you started mentioning this. There's no outdoor storage of materials or equipment permitted. Do, what are they going to do? Are we going to say they can use a, a shipping container? Well, that is not suburban residential, right? <coughs> we could that's, dictate that's that the whole, CUP. The whole hang up so that is the suburban residential, they are prohibited. Yes. Well, Shipping containers specifically are prohibited? Shipping containers are specifically prohibited. Even though they're not a uh, permanent structure? Yes. They came out, uh, Sharon and I had this. Where, uh, where, where is that in the regulation just where I can? Okay, it's Article 19-911, Section 5. And I can read it to you. Is it? one one. 19-11, second five. So it goes through, which is, it's our conditional uses, or supplementary use regulations. It goes through like agricultural zone tracks. You can have one shipping container. It goes down to rural residential. You can have one shipping container. You go down to 19 dash Nine, is that right? 19-111. 111. Sorry. 111. Yeah. Okay. 111. Five. No structure constructed or intended for use as a shipping container, whether as originally as a transportation vehicle or a separate structure, shall be used as a storage container on property zone, suburban residential, Single family residential, East Shore, Lake Watt, Village District. All other such placements were allowed, shall be in conformance with the restrictions within these regulations. Setbacks and things like that. So it, it specifically rules them out in Lake Watt, East Shore, Village, suburban residential, and residential, single family residential. So they would have to get a BZA variance in order to put one on an East Shore lot, for example. Which, at the time these things were written, no one. At the time these things were written, uh, they were, you know, they were the scour scourge of, of land use. I mean, everybody just hated them, and nobody wanted them, and so everybody was regulating them out of existence. And then, over the intervening years, the past ten years, you know, they've gotten cheaper. People started building offices, and there's a restaurant complex built in Wichita, uh, not too far from my house. Uh, these things are came true. Getting closer to us. Yeah. Now. So you just located yourself in Wichita. <laughs> Wesley Hospital, not too far from <laughs> uh, uh, So you guys can shoot me right outside the building here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not running. Uh, no, but but um, so so kind of the, the quick answer to that is to prohibit them in certain districts. And at the time these regulations were written, you kind of saw what was happening with the lake, <coughs> lake shore and, and some of these places. And it was kind of like, well, we're not going to add oxygen to these fires that are already burning. But there's a middle ground to outright prohibition. And we don't want to see things become variances when all it is is like, oh, we, we just kind of want one because they don't meet that criteria. So you try to identify things. If you're getting a lot of variances for certain things like size of accessory structures are usually limited by zoning and people always want to build a bigger uh, you know, storage shed. We can treat them as a BZA uh, use exception and the thing about use exceptions is that they have to be spelled out in the code as a specific use exception. You can't just do a carte blanche like we do for conditional use where we have 
anything that's not enumerated uh, just treated as a special uh, CUP. With use exceptions through the BZA, they have to be specific. So what we could possibly do if, if the commission uh, wants to see us move forward with this is propose an amendment and, and add these storage containers as a use exception in all zoning districts. And that would give the BZA the ability, like a CUP, to dictate site by site, location by location, case by case, mitigating factors by mitigating factors, uh, whether or not these are appropriate in any location in Marion County. So, so we'd have to, if somebody... So they're permitted by the Ag and the Rural Residential will not touch that. But for these other zoning categories, instead of the, the citation that Sharon read where it says these are prohibited in these categories, we'll simply move that paragraph to the paragraph of enumerated use exceptions and say storage containers are permitted um, in these zoning districts upon approval by the BZA of the use exception. And can you put conditions on that? I, I'll just give you my opinion. We've got a lot of areas we're trying to clean up. East Shore is a fine example <coughs> of one where we let people do things that, like store four or five boats on a piece of property and none of them have a current registration. We're trying to clean up and get back to keeping everyone's property value yeah. going in the right direction. There is no value to storage units in East Shore. No value. That is not the direction we want to take East Shore as a, as a community. You know, I, I just don't see the, I get it. I, I, it's a cheap way to do things. Then you have this rusting item that's taken out of use because it's no longer seaworthy and uh, on the property. And it's a small residential community out there. I don't, I'm not for it myself. If these questions are looking at the short term, like a few months to link it something else, or would it be a long term? No, they have a little, I don't know if you'd call it a, it's not really a cabin, it doesn't have facilities, it's like a shed. So they so, want that for long term use. Oh, they they do, like, once no, they get it they on there. They promise if they you want to yeah, limit it, it's, it's, it's like yeah, there's it's no teeth, it's never going to leave. Yeah, yeah, never really once you get it, it's either yes or no. Kind of. When yes. you have so, uh, 80 by 100 foot lots, there's no place to hide a storage unit. Here and then. It's an eyesore, and now you got two neighbors that are pissed off because there's an eyesore. So, this, this but would the setbacks hold that out then? Yeah, they could, yes. They would be subject to the, they'd be treated as an accessory structure right. in the same fashion. And the mitigating, mitigating so this in a situation like neighbors not like it. Yeah, I mean, it's like most other, th I, I, so to get back with one of these comments, I would I would go into this assuming that they're going to be permanent right. fixtures. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even if we would put a time limit on them. These yeah. shores lots are way too small to have Yes. These eyesores in it. Period. The end. It just would. I mean, it, it's like. So we can prohibit it on these small developments, like around the lake and around East Shore, yeah. and, and let them open it up for a. This, this one. I know you can't all see my screen, but this is all farm ground. All like all of it. There's a house. And this is on that like one. Clear over day. here. <coughs> over here. There's this one five acre tract here in the middle of all of that that's sound that's suburbia. suburban residential <laughs> it's just a little five acre tract so we can just um, allow it as a use exception in that particular well, what if they apply for a change of zone <coughs> can't we uh, rezone that agriculture it doesn't meet the lot size uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't meet the it's so zoned that way because it's a five acre track. <coughs> yeah. And so I don't the, know what the, I don't know why it was done this way if there was ever a house on that parcel and the house burned down maybe. Or I bet it, it looks like it would have been. And a lot of you. these tracks have to split off 
So I, what you're saying is with the, pre, the way everything is now, they can't even apply for an exception. That's so basically what we're need to consider is if if we need to change some sort of rule that would allow somebody to apply for an exception. But they could apply for a variance. They could, and that's the wrong tool, in my opinion. The variance, the is, variance the is the wrong tool. Because a variance yeah. is only supposed to be approved if it's not a self-made uh, hardship. Yeah. So this and is wanting something is a self That's the standard. That's, the standard. that's why they had these the exceptions right. that we did approve. Different criteria. Mm -hmm. And so, as we saw in the the, the, the lake variance, when the dude built the no. thing over the property, over the property line, he could not meet that. that. Was, that. He created that problem. Yeah. Literally built that problem and got kicked in the teeth in court when he tried to fight it. And that's because that is black and white and the courts you know usually have some gray area and some and some wiggle room they have been consistent on maintaining those five criteria there's really just the one it's the self-imposed hardship that's almost an impossible hurdle so i have always and and, and dave you're out and, and, and most planners will say look don't treat these things as variances and we all do and they always get approved because you know everybody and it, it I'm kind of fighting a windmill here on this one, but if we have the opportunity to set it up in whatever district we want, suburban residential district may be the only one that we allow it as a use exception. So we're allowing them in the big tract areas, ag and rural residential. We can allow them as a use exception through approval as you guys would, from you guys as the BZA, um, which is similar. It's a BZA type of conditional use. But that we would allow them in, some, say, the SR district uh, as a use exception and then prohibit them in the rest of the zoning districts or permit sure. them in suburban residential or the R1 or what you, yeah. whatever we want to. But if we see East Shore and some of these other non compliant small lot developments where they're building houses over water lines and everything else goes, uh, actually, it's been a pretty unique learning opportunity for me professionally to have some of these areas. Um, <laughs> We're glad you're happy. That's why I'm here. Look at me smiling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we can do we can we can we can do that however we find if so necessary. I'm, so you're right. I mean if if East Shore and, and some of these areas our laws aren't big enough to deal with that stuff. Not big enough to deal with these things. And they so were obviously prohibited that, it for a reason six like years ago. Uh, I'm fine. I'm just saying that, yeah. you know, we can't. You can't want chickens the out there in our right. covenants. Well, like, I don't think we want to. No we want to go and do the like, same thing at the lake. We don't need chickens. Yeah, yeah so no. maybe, maybe I mean, we'll I am, just, I, just like I the other stuff and get right. some sort of draft or something. So we can choose. Can we do that? Easy. Continue some discussion with the draft? Yeah. That sounds like a solid plan. I mean, that's that's either yes or I mean, it's yes or no. I mean, there's. We either do it that way or not do it that way, but I'll put it out there so you can see the references and where we're talking about the zoning code and how that process looks and why we have that process as, a, as opposed to a variance. But but shallow water. It Sounds is. good. Sounds good. Yes. So are they allowed on agricultural? Yes. Yes. And rural residential. One. Today. One. Yes. One. And we're just trying to see if we want to move the lot just a little. I don't think Mary would Mary want to be in town. I don't lots. know what what do you mean? We don't have we don't have any say <coughs> in cities. I, that's true. I mean, <coughs> yeah, there's, there's, which is all bottom and then north. all the retailers, and I know that's a but but all these retailers oh, just came unglued saying we need this for seasonal. So it it became uh, something that was prohibited uh, to something that yeah, you go ahead and have one. 
then I mean, all of a sudden it became now shit. now people are I mean, living in like, homeless shelters yeah. they're uh, yeah. yeah got the top off like a swimming pool yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, see he's <laughs> already got his mind's turning right now I'm gonna bury one in the ground that's why we don't it's want that yeah, yeah, I I stay in there for the rest of my life <laughs> Uh, you've been living out. too close to those in Wichita. Well, let's say uh, you could cut gun ports out of them. Yeah. yeah have you watched Red or Red 2? The guy that goes, he's like an old car. Moving from one part of the field. He's in his house. Get your gear out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, all we have? That's all I have. Anybody else have anything? Yeah. And if not, anybody else have an adjournment motion? I still move. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody for a move. No. Any adjournment. I don't have to. I'm going to go over here. It's surprising.